Did you give it to him? And I was like, no, you can't have it. <laughs> like, I haven't won anything in my life. I want this so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, how much do you want for it? And I was like, no, I'm not going to accept money. You can't have this. Right. And then uh, we went to karaoke and he stole it. Mm. And as we were leaving, you sold it to him. I stole it. I stole it back. Okay, we were leaving. Yeah. He chased me down the streets of Sydney. Like, he chased me for this thing. And then he eventually said, look, I'm going to be, I'm going to give you a deal. <laughs> Which I'm like, there's no deal. Your own trophy. Welcome to another episode of Around the Bar presented by Center. It's a show where I invite someone on to have a drink and a chat. Today, we have the man with many names, Nick Envy Falco 9 Versillo. He's a director for Mogul Moves. He's one of the core casts of probably one of the most popular uh, podcasts on YouTube called The Yard. And he also owns his own company called Make Shit, where he, uh, well, you know. Nick is actually the first guest that we've had on that doesn't drink alcohol. So we're going with the world famous Shirley Temple. It consists of lemon lime soda, grenadine, limes, and a few cherries. Also check out the extension of the podcast called Behind the Bar that's available on the Optic Nation membership program where we play beer pong and answer some awkward questions and compete against the other guests that have been on Around the Bar. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much to Center for sponsoring the podcast and enjoy this conversation with Nick Falco. Today on uh, Around the Bar, we've got Nick Falco. If you guys, <laughs> if you don't know who Nick Falco is, <laughs> cheers. I'm Explain not cheersing you. to that. Why? Give me my, give me my Your mother, real name? The, the name my mother gave me. Nicholas. Hey. There we go. Is cheers that good enough? That. Can I take a sip of this? Yeah, you can sip now. Sip now. So, uh, <laughs> you're through the straw? You're not going through the straw? It was provided to you. Yeah, but it's, is there more for comfort? Than anything, it's there. If like the sip, the sissy sipper is there just in case. That's fucked up. What? It's a bad name for it. What? What do you call? Oh, you call it straw? I would call it like a like a fucking man, like a chill, <laughs> like super dope tube, dope tube of flavor. I'm down to call it. I'll sip through it if it's a dope tube. Mm. I'm so mad the back behind thing didn't work. Fuck. Your man. back's behind you, is that what you said? Yeah, your back's behind you. It was, you know, it was your delivery. I saw it coming. I know. And I realized I should have bailed when I first. You, anyway. like, you were like, boom. Hey, uh, there's, <laughs> there's, there's something behind you. Okay, but you're not in the mindset that I was in the off season. I was set so much on my mind, and you, I was vulnerable, and you took advantage of me, and I don't appreciate it. Um, so, Nicholas Falco, the worst branding. Uh, you know, on yeah. the internet, but yeah. still managed to make it. How did you do that? Uh, despite my branding? Mm-hmm. Oof, oof. Well, it's crazy. I actually think you're the one responsible. Me? Yeah, because... There's you, no way. Because you're calling me a lot of names recently, and that is really... Well, like, you have a lot of names. It's revamped how many people are doing that. There's no way... In my you, life. Our our communities are so separate. Yeah, you're right. You're really, you you're really, you're really tiny. I couldn't be you. <laughs> uh, Fuck that. Maybe it wasn't related. It really it hurts. It hurts because it's true. Yeah, I don't, but you, know, you got when you have a when you have a, a best bud who who uh, ends up on the mm-hmm. New York Times for live streaming. It, it comes with benefits. You also get a little bit notable. Yeah, but what does that have to do with your branding? At that point, I didn't have branding if, until that. If if Blake blew the fuck up, mm. I'd be like, I'm hitch a ride, two eyes and ride. Get it right all the time, all platforms. Bam, bam, bam. You want to find my OnlyFans? Two eyes and ride. If you want to find my Twitch, Twitter, bam, bam. But you're Falco. You're, uh, you're that's all you envy. are. You're, you're two eyes and a ride. I'm two eyes and a ride. A damn good ride. I'll give it, yeah, yeah. I've only known you a little bit of time, but but you know the ride know is fun. Much. The yeah. ride is it's it's quite a ride. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Nick is my name. Okay. Uh, so you get a pass for that one. Yeah. Falco is just my Twitter username. Doesn't make sense because I play that character in you Super know, Smash Brothers uh, Melee for the Nintendo GameCube, and Envy is the gamer tag I used. When also doesn't I, make when sense. I was competing in melee because my initials are NV. That makes sense. So NV is like a word. It's like phonetically it sounds like the word. Sounds NV. like NV. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, which is better than the original idea I had, which was my middle name just with an R and RV. I was gonna be Nerve, which I'm glad mm, I did not. Do. Nerve goes hard. You should bring that back, Nick. Nick Nerve. 
Another episode of Around the Bar with Nick Nerve. Oh, cool. It sounds like a uh, <laughs> like a Call of Duty like Warzone streamer or something. Does it? Yeah. Optic Nerve was a guy way back in the day. Well, not, that's why I couldn't use that. Because you wanted to join Optic? Because I wanted to be an Optic so badly. You were also you were also nine. Two eyes and nine. In my Call of Duty day. Only one eye. Oh. Only I thought you were eye. two eyes. My f- the gamer tag was taken. I had to I had to use two eyes. That's branding. That's what you, if you, if if you have two eyes, you stick how with two you eyes. Get, how did you get two eyes? There was there, the gamer tag was taken. Ah, uh, <laughs> it's the same thing. I think everyone who has two eyes, right? That's the reason. But then you have to go with it. Hitch a ride was taken everywhere. Obviously, it's it's a, but then like your branding is embedded in like a failure you had once. No, not if you view you it. You failed you to get view- the name that you wanted. Okay, well, you just happened to get a different name. You happened to get Falco. So now mm-hmm. that's your brand. Now you're Nick Falco, NV9. Yeah. What was your other one? Nerve. It's weird that you asked me how I got my branding when you seem to know a lot about it. I, Why don't you I, tell me I, how I got my branding? <laughs> Maybe that'll be better. I was just asking, Nick, uh, uh, Matt, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. You're doing, doing good? good yeah, yeah. Matt is also uh, the biggest Yard fan on this pod right now. Oh hey, I not like to that. not to blow up your spot. Yeah, no, I'll take that. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that. <laughs> well, you well you famously have seen one section of one episode. I have seen so one that, section so that of means one episode. That, uh, he has seen. No, he probably listens to potentially him. one full episode at, you, at least. Do you watch him or do you listen to him? Uh, I listen to him. See, mm. it's the audio. Audio. audio, audio, audio listeners. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, I know there's people who uh, who come up to me a lot, mm-hmm. and they'll be like. Aiden, I dude, I knew you were gonna say that, and I'll and I've learned the best answer now is yes, right. Nice to meet you. People call me maniac, and then I'll time. just say anything I want, and I and Aiden said and it. now Aiden said it. Yeah, so oh, uh, you just start slurring out. I think they're audio listeners. They have to be. No, they have but to. But they be. recognize. Like what? I didn't know. Well, I had followed you on Twitter mm. because of a, you were you followed me a long time ago. A lo- like way long yeah, ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. like 2019 or something. Before I worked at Summit, I think. Yeah, it was because I saw you did like a combo video and I was like, holy shit, somebody is actually utilizing like whenever they broke, basically they completely broke Melee apart and now you could go around the map and, yeah. you know, and you utilize that in a combo video. And I was like, holy shit, no one's doing that. That's I, I think dope. I was one of the first people to do that. And then I followed you and I was like, this guy's dope. And then three years later, uh, you know, I, I, I knew that you went to Summit, like, you know, just seeing you on the timeline or whatever. And then, bam, like the yard happens. So I'm listening to the yard because uh, Blake put me on. And I don't know anybody's voices. Mm. So I think you're Aiden yeah. for like five episodes. Yeah, I could never be. I could never live a minute in that, that mind. It's a, it's a crazy mind? Oh, yeah. There's what all about? sorts of skeletons and, and ghouls. and <laughs> Ghouls? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was the same. I'm actually the same with Colin and Samir. Do you, have you ever listened to their, their stuff? Yeah, they did like the Mr. Beast. And I think Lubbock was on there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, he was. So I listened to, they have like a weekly thing where they talk about the creator economy or whatever. And I listened to them for three, four months. And I thought Colin was Samir and Samir was Colin. That and, would yeah, that make sense. And uh, it's just because of audio listeners. Is that your favorite podcast? Uh, n- probably, no. What's your favorite podcast? Shut up. I don't want to fucking, you probably, you know, there's some good ones out there. There's some good ones out there. Wait, what, wait, what is that? What are you doing right now? I was just looking at my my Spotify Wrapped. If 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 it were to say Spotify Wrapped, you guys would probably be first. But that's just because you guys are the most consistent. So don't. I thought I you've wanna... only listened to a section of one episode. Were you lying? I've only watched one section. Oh, but you've listened to the show. Like that was ev- not clear when like you said ev- that. Yes, it is. No, you said I've only watched one section of your show. That uh, that implies you haven't listened to. No, it's not. No, no, no. That's I a said crazy I've thing only, to say. I've only watched one section. You're but dumb I've right now. No, 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 no. Okay, hold on, hold on. In a nut, before this show, you said you don't I've act only like you watched, don't know. You said I've only watched one section of your show. Okay, but don't act like you don't know. I haven't listened to the show. You're trying to get it out of me. No, that I, I actually listened. didn't know that. Shut up. When you said that, shut up. You know this that is a I, genuine reaction. Okay, like when you said you're that, you're trying to get a compliment out of me. That's why I said that's fucked up. Because I'm like, that's crazy. You never. How never did that reappear? You saw me erase that. Uh, that's why you get for buying the fucking Instagram tablet. Why'd you do that? Okay, it's... He just falls victim to ads. No, no, no. I saw it on TikTok, and then I bought it somewhere else. I so see. it doesn't count. Yeah, it's it doesn't count. Yeah. All right, um, <laughs> so... Wait, did we explain what we're drinking? Yeah, Shirley Temples. Fuck yeah. And... Again. It's the, the first uh, virgin drink we've had on... <laughs> drink. <laughs> yeah. First virgin drink we've had on here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's good. 
Real recognize real. Real does recognize real. So <laughs> I, I'm sure you've explained this. I'm sorry to ask you a question you've already answered a hundred times. I don't go on a lot of podcasts. Right. But so, you've probably touched on it a million times in your podcast. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay, maybe. give me a 10-second a, a rundown of who you are, just, for, just in case somebody's okay. listening that doesn't know. Yeah, my name is Nick. Uh, when I enter tournaments of any game, I go by Envy, and I'm a director and also a podcaster. Boom. Perfect. So yeah, you're on. I can't uh, believe you hand counted. I would have gone longer. But yeah, that, no. that worked. That hand counted. That it effective. did work, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're on the you're you're a, con- or a, a director in the in a, a multimedia company basically, and then you're also or an events company as well. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of everything. And then the company also, even the company barely knows what it is itself. So I'm not going <laughs> to. Those try are the to. best companies. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then also you're on one of the probably the biggest podcast in the gaming space. I would say. I mean, is there, do you guys ever have that like competitive? The, the weird thing is that I don't think The Yard is a gaming podcast. Like, it, it's there, a podcast. There's of gamers, gamers on it, right. sure, but like you could say the Trash Taste guys play video games. I don't know That's if they're true. really a gamer podcast, but they're bigger than us. And I would say like Logan Paul is like not a gamer at all, uh, but he, 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 there's more overlap with yeah. him and Ludwig than, but I don't know. The Yard's weird because The Yard, it, maybe it started as like a Ludwig show, but it very much so has become like its own. Identity it for product. sure has its the own. The four of us have sort of like the yard is the four of us, much so more, much more so now. But I, I don't really consider it a gaming show. We talk about gaming because we care about gaming. And it's what we do, but it's yeah. not marketed towards gamers. It's, it's definitely not, not. It's not made. I wasn't saying it. I wasn't saying it's marketed towards gamers. I guess I'm I'm uh, I'm flattered that you think it is really one of the bigger podcasts in gaming. I feel like. What do you think, Matt? I feel like gamers. I feel like. I would say a, a large percentage of people that listen to the art or watch the art are gamers or yeah. have gamed in some aspect. Yeah. Yeah. We do have one yeah. fan who's a mom. One, just one mom? Like one I know of. But she's like, yeah, she's like in her 50s. She comments on a lot of our episodes. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. She a gamer? Shout out. I don't know. Well, she might be. I don't know. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> you've been playing a lot of call, uh, GGCS, third place, runner-up, mm. teamed with Aiden and Clayster, and I can't remember you guys' last, but... Nick you, Yingling, come on, oh, don't Nick do that Ying, to him, bro. Nick Yingling, Nick Yingling. Shout out Nick Yingling. Uh, it was supposed to be Mango, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just didn't show up. He huh? just didn't show up, but you know, he's got bigger things to do. The Nintendo game came out that already... Yeah, yeah, he's streaming Fortnite a lot right now. Is he? Yeah, that was... That was important. Is he really? Yeah. <laughs> he's playing Fortnite like every day right now. You know? You know whatever <laughs> he's at, whatever he, he's having fun Mango, with. Mango told us that he couldn't make the second day of GGCS mm-hmm. because he had to record his podcast. <laughs> and then right? when we played all of our GGCS matches, he hadn't even started his podcast. Yeah. He was just streaming Melee. Yeah, I know. And but, I was like... Uh, and it, it is. It's Mango. I'm, I'm completely okay with it. You know, me and Mango have matching tattoos. Do you? Mm-hmm. That actually makes me upset because what is it, first of all? Uh, so we both have fuck Nintendo. Oh, tattoos. I did know that actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good That's a really Which, good Of course, your audience knows a lot about that, probably. I don't think so. I know. It's oh, you were nothing. joking? Yeah. I did your bit. Yeah, that was my bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nintendo basically blocked, has blocked multiple times. Uh, Imagine like every time you go up to, to like a cute girl at a party and you're like about to introduce yourself, your friend comes over and like sack taps you. Mm, Nintendo has done that to melee that's Nintendo. for 20 years. And so imagine that happens for 20 years and you hate getting sack tapped by your friend so many times that you get a tattoo. And you're yeah, like, yeah. fuck Jerry yeah. for sack tapping it, it says Juice World. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> That's fucked up. Um, but yeah, so you, you, uh, you. The reason I invited you and I wanted wanted to get you into GGCS is because I listen to the yard and you are always bringing up Call of Duty. So I was like, at least he's he's seasoned, he's cultured, he knows. You brought up Optic Predator a few times. You're always phasing the fuck up, mm. and I was like, you know, no, 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 you can't do that here. You will evaporate. Okay. Um, Whoa, does Optic have a thing? Yeah. That's not real. Do it. Matt, back me up. See? That's crazy. Do it. Do it. Do it. No. No. OG. It's like. It's an O and a G. I think maybe I did that at like summer camp once. <laughs> like, hey guys, check this out. That's actually. Th- I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's a real one. <laughs> I was going with it. He did it immediately. <laughs> um, no, we don't have things. It's, uh, it's hard with an O and a G. We've tried. Don't, don't act like we haven't tried. Yeah. We've tried the fucking. 
Yeah, early, I think off camera. Maybe we were recording. I'm not sure. But you did blood with your fingers. You did it really, <laughs> really fast. fast. Yeah, I'm really good at throwing up gang signs. I really am. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I hope no gangsters listen to this. But they, I promise you, none <laughs> do. <laughs> You don't have to say it like that. You don't have to say it like that. I'm sure some ga- I'm sure if you're a gangster, put in the comments like, yeah, I listen. It's funny, dude. You're only eight episodes or something into your show, and right. you've already asked someone who doesn't drink to come on. Are yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Are you like scraping the bottom of the barrel? Yeah, I mean, I want to have slime on too. So true. Yeah. Two two people that don't drink. <laughs> no, this is I, delicious. It's I really lo- good. I feel like I'm at Chili's. I'm already fucked up because I put vodka in mine. You didn't. I know. No, it was actually very noble. Off camera, you were like, I drink with the guest drink. I do. So if anyone's wondering if Hitch is real about his content. Yep. I'm a wannabe uh, Sean Evans. I eat the wings, except I'm and not. We're, but we're drinking Colt. Oh, that's already a show, too. Oh, my God. It is a show, isn't it? Yeah. But, oh, it is. Is that what Cold Ones means? You have, dude, you have two brain cells, and they are fighting Holy for Holy shit. I can't be the only one. Holy shit. No, no, I thought Hot Ones was just like, oh, if I were going to do Cold Ones, but Cold Ones is the drink, because it's a cold one. Holy shit. Cracking open a cold one. You never heard that? I've never watched it, to be fair. I'm not even the drinker here. I've never watched it. They're great guys. Big fan of like his Pokemon stuff, though. Max Mofo? Yeah. Really funny Pokemon content, but I've never really watched Cold Ones. Max and Chad, like, we... We've met a lot of like random people in like the streamer YouTuber sphere at this point. Yeah, they are like, they were like the most welcoming, really, like nice. They just wanted to hang out. Like they didn't want to do any content. They didn't. Want, they just wanted to like go oh, out. That's dope. in Melbourne and just like hang out. And like we went to karaoke. I, I <laughs> when I met when I met Chad from Cold Ones, it was because we were in Sydney for a melee event called Phantom, and uh, I entered and won doubles okay. at that event. Okay, uh, with Polish. And uh, it was my first and only melee trophy. Who'd you, who'd you beat uh, in finals? Grand finals was in another American team. It was um, Crike and, and Jada. Uh, and before that, I think we played like Josh Man and okay. uh, Kalen. And I can't remember every team. Um, but it was, two, it was all American on grand run. finals yeah. Yeah. in Australia. And my only smash trophy I've ever, I've ever had. And when I met Chad for the first time, uh, Chad's weirdly followed me like as long as you. Like he's followed me like a really long time. Really? He doesn't know why. Yeah. See, I think if I didn't, <laughs> if I didn't remember the combo video, I don't think I, I don't, would remember. I don't know why either. Yeah. But I, but I brought it up, and he like instantly was like, "Oh, I know exactly you. I followed you a super long time." And I'm like, "That's so. I don't know." Yeah. And he was, and he saw my trophy. He's like, "What's that?" Yeah. And uh, I'm like, "Oh, I won this today at, at the Smash event we're at." He's like, he was, then he was like, "Can I have it?" <laughs> Did you give it to him? And I was like, no, you can't have it. <laughs> like, I haven't won anything in my life. I want this so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, how much do you want for it? And I was like, I'm, no, I'm not going to accept money. You can't have this. Right. And then uh, we went to karaoke, and he stole it. Mm. And as we were leaving, you sold it to him. I, stole it, I stole it back. Okay, we were leaving. Okay. He chased me down the streets of Sydney. Like, he chased me for this thing. <laughs> and then he eventually said, look, I'm going to give you a deal. <laughs> Which I'm like, there's no on deal. Your this own is trophy. Mine. <laughs> He's like, let me have it for one year. Okay. And it'll live on the cold one set on behind us on the wall. And then I'll give it back to you. Okay. And so I have a or my, I have a notification on my phone ready. Oh, so this is still happening. It's, it's on the cold one set. Is it? Can the you fa- break the, fo- the oh, phantom trophy? Matt is, left. It's, it's it's in the background. It's like hard to see, but it's on like their bookshelf. Mm. Uh, so you're still. And they, they recently. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but they got robbed. Oh God. And then he uh, he posted they got robbed. <laughs> I messaged him like. They get my trophy. <laughs> like, that's the only thing you care that's about. That's all I care about. Is I'm like, hey, sorry, like, sorry you got robbed, but like, there's a trophy. <laughs> but please still tell there. me the trophy is still there. Uh, so yeah, that's where that's where that is. That's good. On the opposite side of the spectrum, is have you guys had somebody on the yard that you didn't really, ha- that wasn't really welcoming? Or Oh, you... I didn't mean welcoming as a guest. I meant welcoming as just like people. We, just a people lot of them are just out? like, like something that, because the yard is like three people who do not stream and then Ludwig. Right. Like something that happens a lot when we meet people is they're like, are you a streamer? And you're like, no. no. And they're like, but, but you could be like, you'd have a big stream. Why don't you do that? Like, I don't get, they don't get it. And it's like, yeah, oh, that was my know. second question. I don't know. We don't want to. I don't know. <laughs> well, my second question is why don't you stream? But yeah, if you just answer it then yeah, I can just do all of them really quick. Okay. Right? And then we can just talk about whatever you're behind, Well, if you check behind you real quick, your back is back there. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah. And, and you, you are so cultured in COD from listening to the yard that when I, you know, eventually asked you like, Hey, you want to play in this tournament? Well, first of all, brought you to uh, the off season. Mm-hmm. Cause I thought that, you know, having someone, 
you know, we were going through the list of all the all the all the talent that that could commentate, and I was like, having someone fun in such like a chill environment. Like you and Slime? Well, I just asked you. I was you, so, dude, I was you, so sad you didn't have me and Slime cast COD. I wanted to do that so Did you bad. really? Yeah. Because I, I thought that part of coming to this event would be like, I get to cast Call of Duty for the first time, and I was like, oh, I'm going to love that. Oh, shit. You should have said something. You were really shy, though. You were shy at the off season. Uh, I mean, I can't say no, because then I'll look wrong, you know? I'll be like, I wasn't yeah, shy. Yeah. But, but I, I feel like I'm just, I'm just a reserved you were person. That's why you got me with the drop your pocket thing. I know you, you try to sound, or Slime tries to sound cool. It's the opposite of shy. You, I know because oh, I want to impress. No, no, it's just because you Slime. were shy up until that point. <laughs> You're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> the Shirley Temple's made a what now? <laughs> you were shy up until the drop your pocket thing. And then you did the drop your pocket thing. So I, would, I wouldn't expect it out uh, of you. Yeah. And then you got me and I was like, no, I think I just hate Texas. Uh, I think I is? just think Texas sucks. Yeah, that's how I feel about Cali too. Yeah. Yeah. You except to- except Cali is like cool and better. I do think I do. I'll go on the record. Uh, that that L.A. is horrible. L.A. is bad. Yeah, L.A. is yeah. horrible. I hate L.A. It's cool that like now knowing that like whenever we go because the uh, TST and, and the optic guys we go to we go to Cali all the time, mm. but we never really unless we're hanging out with Jack or we're hanging out with like the thieves guys we we just pretty much go to whatever event it is and then we go home. We don't have anybody to show us around and show us where that apparently there's like cool spots and like nice yeah. people yeah, yeah, and. Yeah. You know, not smelly things. Well, I was born and raised there, so I, I defend it, I think. Mm. But uh, I do... See, I, I don't really care about Texas that much. I like it, but I, I don't like it. I love how weird Austin is, and I love how big everything is everywhere else. That's, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, let's keep uh, let's keep Dallas maybe weird and big. See, I don't like... I, I, it's the Cali in you, because I like the opposite. You like everything small and cool. <laughs> yeah, going to Austin, I'm just like, where That's is this? That's a vibe. This isn't. This is not Texas. Yeah, this is California. It's too weird. It's California. Yeah. And they, they took out. That's LA. why I like Austin. Austin's like that's the what, only cool place that, in Texas. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And we're opposite. Oh man. Yeah. I really. My dream when I was like 16 to like 19 was I really wanted to work at Rooster Teeth. Okay. And I thought one day I'd I'd maybe work at Rooster Teeth, and then uh, the dream died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That changed. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. Rooster Teeth is good. Uh, I made a friend who worked there, and I mm. was like, "Hey, like your job?" And they're like, "I hate it. My every day is hell, and being here is terrible." And I was mm. like, "Oh, okay. okay, cool." So, like, would you like recommend me? Or? <laughs> but then you got into oh, uh, so so first of all, you're, you're cultured in Call of Duty because mm. you grew up playing Call of Duty. Yeah. In the trick shot phase up side of things. In the yeah, well, I started playing Call of Duty four. Yeah, because my neighbors played Call of Duty Four, and they're and they're playing online. And at that point, I had like really no experience playing online games. Okay, I was playing a lot of Smash basically with like my friends. But like I was like, holy shit, COD! I'm in uh, what grade am I in? I must be in middle school, like in sixth, seventh grade or something. Holy shit! Um, because Modern for Two came out when I was in eighth grade, so I must have been in sixth grade. Oh my grade. god! Yeah, um, so and I was a, yeah, I was and maybe even fifth grade. I'm not sure. I gotta, I gotta think about it. Um, but, uh, they were playing COD 4 and we were like, we'd set up like a, um, we'd tape a blanket <laughs> to the TV so we could split screen without yep, cheating. Without cheating, right. And then we'd, we'd 1v1 snipers on, uh, Crash, um, and COD 4. On Crash of all maps. Yeah. Well, shipment, you could spawn trap, which we thought sucked. So we were like, oh, let's, let's play it for real. Okay. Um, and then, uh, I, I bought a Dazzle. And I was like, I want to yep. make montages. Uh, so yes. I made some Dazzle montages. And then... You're cultured. Yeah, and then something, something uh, H- got, H- got H- really... DVR. Joined my first Call of Duty clan, started making montages. The rest is kind of history. And so you, like, m- kind of made it back then in the... In, like, the in small the trick way. shotting scene. And, yeah, like... People a, knew who you were. Yeah, I was kind of like a hitch <laughs> of COD, you know? It's like... Where it's like <laughs> some people might know it's like, some it's like some vague yeah. some like, vague it's like memory. He's like a God well, guy. he's the guy. I think he's yeah. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Actually, that's fucked up, but it makes sense. I, I did a little bit of game battles, a lot of sniper leaderboards, uh, like the like two, like four v four, like headquarters, mm-hmm. Warner for two. Um, played a lot of Black Ops two league play. Oh really? Yeah, we'd those like, were the days. We'd play like all snipers and get master, and then we'd like make a new team. Um, and then that was my last COD I played, Black Ops Two. Black Ops Two, and then you went on to greener pastures of Super Smash Brothers Melee for the Nintendo game. Yeah, because MLG Anaheim 2014. 
I was watching for Call of Duty. Ghost, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Is it Ghost? Yeah, that was 20, 2014, the yeah. year Mango one? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. That's probably why I was ready to leave the community, because Ghost was out. <laughs> yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Uh, Not the greatest game. And then I saw Smash on this, on this bar on the side that was like other streams, and I was like, Smash? Right. I was like already playing it every day, um, and I was just like, there's a... Competitive scene? What? I'd That's never heard so of it. That's so crazy. I hadn't even seen the documentary. So you missed the doc. You missed the doc because that that Smash started that year because of the documentary. Right, right. And I started be- at the same time, just not because of the documentary. That's wild. So I saw. I think the first. I, I always remember the first match I watched, and I'm not sure if this match really happened or if it's a memory, or if I just saw two people and thought of a match later. Yeah. But it was Axe versus Zero, and I was like, that happened. Okay, so then I'm almost positive that happened. Okay, so then I was like, why is this dude with a scarf <laughs> playing against this guy who's wearing the Arizona flag? <laughs> I'm like, these guys are fucking losers. Like, yeah, oh yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I was, I That's saw how fast so, they were, and I was right. like, I was just like, oh dude, no one in my life. It's this fucking boring story everyone has, but like, no one in my life has ever beaten me at Smash. Yeah, I should go play that game. I bet I'd be so good. The and narrator he, is like, he was not he, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and then he tried. And then I went to my first tournament. I got washed. Uh, right. My only, I only won a single tournament set my first year I played Smash. And it was versus someone's little brother who was like eight. And he falcon punched me. Ta- <laughs> I was like, we take those, but I guess if you're getting falcon punched. And I punched. barely won. Uh, yeah. So I was dog shit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that was the COD. That's, why, that's how I got like out. Yeah, of, out of COD. Yeah. And then... You've since been dragged back in. Yeah, and I was—I I made a big thing of it of like I don't want the people who followed me in Call of Duty to follow me into Smash. Right. So I just changed my gamer tag. You changed everything. And I was like, I need so a new n- gamer tag. So nine died. Yeah. Nick nine, dead. Yeah. Nick Falco. No, Envy oh. is the tag I used. Nick Envy. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. You know, you know this actually—I've never told anyone this story. Okay. It's very short. Let's hear it. I entered my first. <laughs> um, one of my first melee tournaments as nine. Oh, nice. And I lost to a Pichu. <laughs> and I didn't want anyone to see my bracket, so I just changed my tag. That's good. That's <laughs> that was good. also a big reason I changed my tag. Was I, I lost to a fight at the balcony, which was a, a Smash tournament that yeah. these people would throw at this disgusting house. Right. <laughs> They, their only decorations were uh, Burger King chicken fry containers that they would staple to the wall, <laughs> and they had hundreds. What? So they would just go to Burger King all the time. And just, that's their decorations. Yeah. And then they just threw and then smashed about, melee and then, like, lands. nine disgusting couches they found on the side of the road, and that was how you, you played on a couch. That was gross. <sighs> TVs everywhere, no furniture. Like. So who lived here? Just the TOs? It was like a rotating TO pool. They would just live there. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. See, that's one thing that we never really had, or at least I never experienced in COD, is like that local scene. It's everything. Yeah, it's everything for Smash. It's everything that makes that makes gaming communities like that, especially fighting game communities, like special and cool. Is there like, is there any other game besides fighting games that have that? Uh, probably not now anymore. Besides like chess, but and... there's like card games, right? A lot yeah, of like yeah. like Yu Gi Oh and stuff. Um, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, you're such a bro. Card game, <laughs> yeah, the one with fucking girls and money. Yeah, I know that one. <laughs> okay, I, when you said card games, I was not thinking Yu Gi Oh. I, I like to say, or I guess or I, I stole this from Nick Nicholas Yingling, but uh, COD players are the baseball players of esports. Um, uh, or even further, the Oakley sunglasses <laughs> okay. of esports. Shout out Oakley. <laughs> Shout out Oakley, shout out Center. Um, yeah. Oh, they're a sponsor. Center is a sponsor, but also Oakley is a sponsor of of uh, uh, Drink, drink Oakley. No, 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 other one, the other one. Drink, center your Oakleys and uh, drink. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna throw up. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll splice that together. <laughs> Put that on uh, some sort of vertical <laughs> platform. Uh, yeah, probably card game communities, probably. Um, fighting games for sure. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like old, um, older communities like Counter Strike when they when like lands were bigger. And That's stuff, what I'm saying. Like, like I I think there like we used to have like pro ams and like local scenes here, but they just don't exist anymore. Everything is online, and I think it's kind of like I think the local scene is like kind of what from the little I know about melee and Smash in general is like what keeps that. It's the lifeblood. Yeah, yeah, it keeps it going. Well, I think it's tough when... You know why it's probably not a big thing with other titles is uh, developer support. A lot of games have developer support, and Smash has never had developer support. Yeah. So you're, everything's grassroots. Like Every tournament is just someone... Like 
I think why tournament organizing, you'll probably relate to this, why tournament organizing is like such a helpless job is a lot of times a tournament organizer is someone who wants something to exist because they want to go to it. But then when you decide to run it yourself and create it and have it be a thing that exists for other people, you don't get to go to it. You're the person responsible for it being alive yeah. and existing for other people, which is a very selfless job. And I think that, uh, uh, you yeah. know, with Smash, like, it's like, oh, there's no locals around me. I'll make one. But the more you participate, the worse your event is. So, like, good TOs, at some point, they make a choice where they're like, I got to focus on the event being good more so than, playing. than enjoying the event myself. Yeah. Okay, I get what you're saying. And I think that uh, that's, you know, the only thing that keeps Smash alive is that there's people who make almost no money who are still doing that Yep. And and willing to. I mean, yeah, people talk about how little money there is in Smash. Oh my god. All the time. Yeah. And uh I mean, obviously we're seeing it in the in the space right now, unfortunately. I think Gold Guardians just got rid of all the melee yeah. all 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 things Smash. So uh there's we we've seen I, I I've just now started saying we, but like people have seen the ups and downs of melee. And I feel like we're kind of there. There's kind of like a little bit of a downslope right now. It, it's weird. There's a downslope in how it kind of feels. Right. But if you look at players, it's an all time high. Oh, as far as skill? No, no, no. Amount. Attendance, really? Yeah. Well, online changed uh, everything. Okay, okay, there are more people playing Melee right now than ever before. Uh, but will that translate into, into tournament attendance? I, I don't know. I do think the past couple like big majors have had a lot of players. Yeah. But. Uh, it's weird. Online's a very weird thing because it's something that Melee needed to stay alive and simultaneously is kind of destroying everything that's kind of special about the game. Like, you're not going to locals really much anymore. There are right. there are a few locals. When I, when I was playing Melee at the height of it, I was going to five locals a week. What? Five a week. Uh, oh, in, but you're... In 2018, I went to like 130 locals. <laughs> what the f What did you do with the rest of your time? Like... <laughs> What? I was just in school. Like, you, like I, just I went hate, to school and played I Smash. hated my life. I was a barista. I hated my job. Right. Uh, I lost like basically all my friends because all my friends went to different colleges. So okay. I was like, I have no friends. So I like just joined the Smash community, and I was like, uh, everyone I know is here now. And so unless I like hang out with these people, I have I'm hanging out with no one. Holy shit! And so I was like, I'm gonna go to, start going to events, and I moved yeah. into a Smash house, and then we started throw. We had an event at our house every week. Um, okay. And that was yeah, that who was R? Just you and your Everyone, all my roommates. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the the re the way I met Slime, who's on my podcast. I don't know how people watching this watch me, but yeah, yeah. Um, was <laughs> he used to come to our house for our local melee event? Um, and he didn't even like me. Like when I met right. him, like yeah, he didn't even he didn't even like me very much. And then fast forward, he got a job at Beyond the Summit, which is a production studio for esports, and uh, he asked if he could pay me rent to live and sleep in my closet because it was closer to his job. And you said, yes. And I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's a closet. I, it, it, it was like, it was like literally a broom closet that was unused. So no, it, how much it space? the size of a person laying down. So he put and a mattress? Are like, Did he put a mattress yeah, in there? He, he put a mattress on the floor and had nothing else. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, dead ass. He, he would like, he would literally, when it was time for bed, he would like, like fucking uh, like a vampire. He would lay down in the closet <laughs> And he would turn into Dracula, and and he would just fall asleep. Holy shit! Yeah, and then he he put like his computer in the living room. Okay. And he would just like yeah play there. What a. That's how I met Slime. <laughs> you met him when he moved in. To my, well, to no, I met him way before that, but it, it was through throwing how, tournaments how, at our house. How how friend how close of friends were you guys when he asked to move into your closet? We were becoming becoming friends. We were slowly becoming like like. Uh, best friends like we were slowly oh, okay, okay. we so were like slowly stage. becoming like like oh we're, we're hanging out a lot we're talking a okay lot. okay and I, th I think that like so it's not like you asked matt to move into his closet uh well me and matt are homies we, uh, we go way back oh yeah. okay so he does, you know he doesn't fuck with you i asked him. <laughs> he does he he no, doesn't no, 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 no. that actually wouldn't surprise he, he's me. like he's like who? but you don't know the guy with the the bussin haircut that's what he said and i was like i don't yeah, think he said that doesn't sound like yeah that doesn't sound like the don draper bussin haircut meme guy yeah i know him see you don't you don't know matt very well he wouldn't say that he wouldn't say any of that stuff you know matt's real name austin isn't that crazy? No, Matt's his that, middle name. Okay, that's all. You, no, Matt's, you're his, Matt's you're, his middle name. No, okay, you're mixing up people. I, anyway. I got to know him. I, okay, I might not know him as well as you know him. Maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's what it is. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about Summit. You, there's, 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 there's nothing in here for, for you and I, you know? We can just... 
Me and you can just hang out. You don't need you don't need this, baby. Yeah, but I want. But I'm, it, I'm all you need. But I have to. I have to. I have to drive this ship <laughs> mm. because if I don't, then we'll just talk about not, me- we'll talk about to. melee for two and a half hours. Yeah, right. Isn't that? I would love it. Okay, that's but me. I feel like there's that's people. Summit. There, I feel like there's people that d- wouldn't love it. So, COD. Mm. First of all, you're welcome for getting you back to where you need to be. I do. I do owe you that. Yeah, but, <laughs> you're welcome. I, yeah. We have embraced you. Yeah, I'm currently I'm currently in debt to you for letting me play COD for money, <laughs> uh, for arguably the first time in my life. Yeah, arguably, and and so now you're you're loving the new game. You said you haven't played since Black Ops Two. No. You're loving Modern Warfare Three. You're addicted. Yeah. Wager grind, GB grind. We're in it. It's so me, bad. you, Yango Star, <laughs> TST. Dude, we're playing off stream and shit. Yeah, I yeah. I've, I've never I have never played COD GBs off stream since I started streaming until we played. You're, the other you're night. just having that much fun with us. I'm, the game's really good. <laughs> <laughs> the game is really good. I'm really liking the game. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, you guys seem to enjoy GGCS. You and Yingling put by far the most time and effort into a, the tournament over everyone else. I think that's just that's just the melee player in us. Mm. I think melee I players like like. Uh, it's easy to say this because I'm coming from that community. Everyone thinks their community is whatever, but but like, dude, what it takes to come into a community, like like for example, I'm from Los Angeles, and like at one point, LA was or like California was the strongest region in the world for melee. What it took to beat anyone at your local scene was like a year of concentrated effort, right? And so like I, I think we're just so used to expecting to get shit on at <laughs> everything. That makes sense. And I think when we when we came to this, we were just like. All right, we have someone like Clayster on our team. Someone right. like we we knew who Clayster was before this, obviously. And we were like, we cannot be shitty because he will hate his life. <laughs> we need to be good enough to where he feels like he's not wasting his time. Yeah. Uh, and that that was my, my big goal was like for everyone on our team to feel like their time wasn't being wasted, and that we yeah. had, and that at any point we had a chance to win it. That's ha- what I wanted. Having coming from having come from Summit and LACS and all these different smash events that you've been a part of how do you think the overall gdcs went Just, you want you want to notes i want to notes on the podcast as long as they're positive <laughs> Just kidding. They can be negative. I, I'm just trying to get an okay. overall view. I've already asked a lot of the COD guys. I actually think you guys are the opposite of what a lot of Smash uh, event problems are like. I think what you guys did so really, really, really well is you had what felt like, and I was a player, so it's really hard for me to know. Like I wasn't watching the whole event, but it felt like a hiccupless broadcast for the most part. Most point. Like it felt like the broadcast was really smooth. Games weren't being unstreamed or delayed. Uh, there wasn't like huge technical flubs that were constantly, at least, being publicly shown. Um, like it felt like the broadcast team did a really good job. Um, and like all of the sort of bells and whistles, like event stats and stuff like that, like all that was taken care of. It was really cool. I think what what was, I think, the event did a really bad job of communicating the schedule to players. Uh, here's my argument. It's bullshit. Here's my argument. Y'all are just all dumb. Here's anyway, my, okay, keep going. Keep going. Because gamers suck, and gamers don't read stuff Agreed. that you that you write for them. So like, if you have a like a channel in your Discord that's like the schedule, and then what you guys did, and you post it like a month ago, and all the players say, "I want to do this event," any TO knows they did not read that. I know. So I think there needed to be a more concentrated effort. To, to just spam to them? To spam them okay. and be like, I need your express approval that mm. this day, because I think you guys had to have known the day would be on their scrims. The last day would be on their scrims. Because their scrims are I consistent. Didn't, okay. And if you didn't, I think that you guys should have known. I do know now. Going into next year, I know. Be, but this year, the players started scrimming five weeks earlier than they normally do. I think, yeah, then it was just unfortunate that no one knew, but I think, like, yeah. someone's job should be to know that. For sure. And then communicate, like, get get the pros to say back to you, like, hey, I am are you going to be there yeah, here, yeah, yeah, or yeah. are reschedul- scrims reschedulable? And I think that that, like, of course they're fucking gamers, and they didn't read shit, and that's their fault, but I think, like, that's what you sign up for for TOing events, is, is, like, digging shit into their stupid is. little brains. They uh, dumb because, Dumb brains. because to be honest, I'm horrible. I read, I read like because I worked in like production and stuff. Like I read stuff. When you give it to me, I read stuff. I didn't even know the last day was a different time, and mm. I was like, 
the information I'm sure existed somewhere, but no one was like, make sure you look at the schedule. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. By the way, everyone, the last day is different. Like, I found out the night before. And I was like, if I'm just finding this out, there's no way Clayster has any yeah, idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I'm going to move this. I keep hitting it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think other than, I think the the scheduling and the substitution rule, obviously, was a big thing. Oof, I think I didn't bring that up. I think other than that... Uh, <laughs> There was no rule. First of all, I just assumed I, I it was a, it was such an ambitious event because yeah. I've ever only thrown one two day events before. Never like I, I think like it's this. really easy in hindsight for people to say what you should have done, but I think in the moment when you have like two hours to to give subs to like twenty teams, yeah, yeah, like yeah. It, you know, I can imagine that was hard, and I can imagine like why. I, I do think it was a really bad idea to let people switch bad players for good players because I think the heart and soul of the event was c combining skill levels. Yep. Like I think the whole thing was like pros and cr creators and bad players are coming together and they're trying to win something together. Right. And I think that the team that was let their bad players switch for like a good player, I think that was a big mistake on the TO's part. I think they shouldn't have allowed, I shouldn't have allowed that. I yeah. do think that it was unfortunate that CDL players dropped out and I think those subs made a lot of sense. I'm not saying that just because that was our team. Yeah. Uh, that makes more sense to me because it's like, oh, you're trading a one seed for a one seed or a one seed for even a lower seed. Like, yeah, it's not, you know, we're not going to trade Clayster for really anyone and, and it's going to be like, oh, well, that's unfair. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, but and, but and that's lucky in some. And sense. I think it showed because the team that went like one and seven went to grands. And it's like yep. and uh, when I when the event ended, I was just like, I, I get what it's like to be a T.O. They made a call. Maybe the call wasn't perfect, but they're doing their best with what they have with the time they have. And that makes sense to me. And I was just really happy that the team that won got to win. I think their storyline's the best. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're, they're very BTH they're very team? unexpected to win. They have a they have the only console player in the event who's a battle rapper. Yeah. That type. That's sick. uh Pomage, who's been in the community as long as me. Uh, yeah, yeah. and maybe maybe longer. I'm not sure. Um like probably probably really wanted that. I know it's like for me, for like sure. to win an event like that, like like that would mean so much to me. It it, it almost feel as good as winning a melee event, like almost. Yeah. Uh, because I, you know, I never dreamed of that when I was playing. Uh, so it was cool to see like a team that really wanted it get it because I our team also really wanted it but it, I think they wanted it more yeah honestly the yeah the BTH yeah. team I just wanted I think what I wanted more than winning I did really want to win I because I just I'm very competitive but I think I just wanted to play well more than I wanted to yeah. win yeah and I think that I did I think on the, specifically the last two days I think I played really really well so I was happy yeah it was it was a it was a very fun event I'm glad that you know there's there was people that I got from Smash and and other scenes and. You know, there's some Fortnite guys, especially some Apex guys, Valorant guys. Like, we were able to bring a bunch of people in, which I think I think that you guys on your side of things do a really good job of doing that. Obviously, you guys just did the Gamer of the Year. Mm. Um, like off-brand off, stuff. Off-brand stuff is what I'm talking about, yeah. yeah. Um, what is it? Not Gamer of the Year. Gamer. gamer world's greatest. World's greatest gamer. And you get people from all different sorts of communities. That event was awesome. In. Yeah, it had cool storylines. Um, yeah. Like, unexpected outcome. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, I love that shit. I love, like, throwing events and... I think that's when I realized that the dude that I followed on Twitter that makes combo that makes combo videos is now now you're like running basically a bunch of shit for Summit. I was like, oh shit, that's dope. And then you know, obviously Ludwig steals all of you guys for uh, all of his stuff, and it was just like it's just uh, cool production everywhere it seemed that you guys went. So what? Talk about your introduce, introduction into Summit and like how how do you go from like this COD kid who plays Smash and like to yeah. like knowing how to make shit? Uh, well, <laughs> you like to say, you ah, <laughs> that's nice. That's good. That's real ones now. Um, uh, so to keep a super long story short, I I started like when I was younger. I'm only 27 now, but uh, so I I consider myself much more like a a kid of the internet than of like traditional film and and stuff like I, I didn't grow up wanting to be a filmmaker I didn't even grow up watching a lot of movies I grew up watching like internet content and YouTube yep. and e-bombs world and flash animations and yeah. newgrounds and stuff and I was like this is what I want I want to be a YouTuber 100% I was like 10 when I realized that I was like I want to do this 100% and I started a YouTube channel I first I started with stop motion like most a lot of video people do and uh, I was watching people like Smosh and like Freddie Wong and I was like I just want to be these guys um, and I asked my parents to send me to a, a, a video editing camp i went to summer camp for people who wanted to learn adobe and i learned after effects and premiere uh and final cut and um and uh oh final cut editor that's us that's yeah it's like i don't know it's like 11 of you now um <laughs> <laughs> We're still uh, kicking though. <laughs> and and you know fast forward a bit i started playing call of duty it, naturally i want to edit my own montages because yep. i know how to do that kind of stuff and so i did and 
And then fast forward again, I'm graduating college. I'm having my life crisis. I'm like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I hate my job. I hate school. Uh, I love playing Melee, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Like, uh, I never saw myself as someone who would like go pro in a game. Like, I knew I wanted to do something creative. And so I was like, what the fuck am I going to do? And then when Slime got hired to Summit, it was the only person I think any of us who knew Slime knew who worked in esports. We were like, "What? you can do that? What? Oh, really? Like, everyone was just like so hyped for him, but also like, wait, that's oh. a real thing? Right, yeah. Like, we didn't even know that was a thing. And, and like people who like worked at like esports teams, we were like, are those actually companies? Like we didn't know, what the, <laughs> like we didn't know if they were companies. Like we didn't really think about it that way. At least I didn't. And uh, and it was so cool that he was able to. We were all watching Smash Summit every year, and we we're like, this is the dopest event by far for this game so, right so. now. And when he started working there, we were like, holy shit! Like, and so I instantly was like, dude, can I work here? Like, what do I? What, what's my skill set? And I was like, yeah. I actually have kind of a portfolio. Like, uh, my first gig I ever got in esports was. A Red Bull gig. Okay. Um, I did the motion graphics for a documentary about Alex Myers, uh, the fighting game player, um, and uh, and that was like my first gig. And so I put it on my portfolio. It's a crazy first gig. Yeah, I, it was actually like a really high paying. I, yeah, there was a guy from Melee who made a documentary called Sixty Frames, and okay. he ended up working with, at Red Bull. And then okay. I knew him because he was from Cali and and in the Melee scene. He was like, "You do video stuff." He's like, "You want to help on this thing?" And I was like, "Yes, yes sure." And then I took yeah. the gig, and it was like. It was one of those like, just tell me how many hours you worked. It's fifty bucks an hour. I'm like, fifty bucks an hour. <laughs> I mean, I'm in college. I'm like, right. I was like, I worked a lot of hours, and a they're like, here's a lot of money. And yeah. I was like, holy fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I put it on my portfolio, and then I started making a bunch of spec work for Summit. I was like, I want to work there. I'm going to build a bunch of like spec jobs of like, oh, I'm gonna build them new intros for their content. I'm gonna build yep. them like broadcast uh, graphics. I'm gonna. And so I built a bunch of spec stuff and I sent it to them in a portfolio and I was like, hey, I want to work here. I made some stuff. Um, tell me if you like it. I like motion graphics. That's what I want to do. Um, that's what I always thought I wanted to do at that point. I thought I wanted to be a motion designer. Okay. And uh, Dan, Dan, who was the uh, director of content at Beyond the Summit, hit me back and he was like, hey, let's interview. Interviewed went really, really well. And, and then he was like, why don't you come shoot photos of this event? And I was like, yeah, I'm a photographer. I'll do that. I wasn't. I lied. <laughs> um, uh, grabbed my girlfriend's camera, went, shot the event, went well. Uh, and then they were like, hey, do you know how to process 360 footage? And I was like, yeah, of course. I did not. I had never done that in my life. Right. Uh, and they were like, can you come do that at the, at the studio next week? We need someone to do it. And we're like behind in a documentary. And I was like, absolutely. I'll be there. They asked me day of. And I was like, they're like, can you be here in an hour? And I'm like, I can be there in an hour and a half. I was like 10 minutes away. Like I can be there so fast. And I was like, yeah, give me like an hour and a half. You had to learn? I just learned it <laughs> on YouTube. Drove over, tried to memorize it all, and then like did it through memory, and then I I just did it. It wasn't even that hard. It was like, yeah, you know, it, it's just three, two, three, whatever. And then uh, and then they uh asked me to join up, and that was like, I, my whole life was like, oh my god, my life has meaning now. Like I was, it was like yeah. a transformation. I was like, like I'm in college. I hate. I had a marketing degree. I don't remember anything I learned. Like I, <laughs> I cheated in like every single fucking class. Like I, like totally bullshit school. I was just yeah. playing melee every day at the local like melee club at school. And uh, I was your just, college like, had a melee club. Yeah. Did you start? That, it? That's how I met like all my friends. Like the way I met Slime was my buddy Garrett. Uh, Is that had ASU? A, at a yeah yeah yeah, uh, Forkham Devils. Uh, really uh, Cal Poly Pomona, where Doctor Disrespect went. Oh shit. Yeah. So we're kind of the same. You and Doc? Yeah. yeah. Same height. Same past. Uh, so. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think no, so. Different past. <laughs> same height, though. Um, uh, my buddy Garrett started a Smash house and was like, uh, I went to, to the Smash clubs, like one of their tournaments. And then I was like, I need a place to live. I'm coming to the school soon. Can I live with you? And he was like, uh, yeah, let's, let's like hang out first. Yeah. Hung out. And then I moved in with them. And he was friends with Slime. So I ended up meeting Slime. That's crazy. Yeah. So then you, you're. I mean, you said everything changed. You go to Summit. Everything changed. I was. I thought. So when, I thought I would work there for thirty years. <laughs> I was like. I was like. I've made it. I have yeah. a job in my favorite thing in the universe, yeah. and it's both my favorite things. It's video and video games. It's, it's all of it. Like Especially everything I love. Specifically Smash. I and say. fucking Smash. So I was yeah. like, everything I love is here. I'm gonna be here forever. I'll be here until this company is no longer a thing. Was Dota still going on when you were there? Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was. It was going on like years into me being there. Oh really? Yeah. How, how, when did Dota stop? When did it become just Smash? It was never just Smash. Really? No, no. Uh, Maybe I just fell was, out of... There was Dota Summit, Counter-Strike Summit, Rocket League Summit, um, I don't even remember. Mortal Kombat Summit, Smash Summit, uh, Ultimate Summit. 
Uh, we did a couple random mobile game events that were like so are white these, label. Are these like one off? Some of them. Mortal Kombat was one off. Rocket okay. League had two. Um, and then Co- Counter Strike, Dota, Smash. Yeah. Had a bunch. Okay. Um, but like the other one, Rocket League Summit was like a huge success. Like it was yeah, like it was I'm like sure. a big, it was like a big event. I'm sure it was. I just don't think I didn't know anything about Rocket. They're League very Summit. insular. Like they're very like they're, those communities watch it, and outside communities oh, like, for sure. don't really. Same house though, right? Same venue yeah. and everything. That's so yeah. Because Summit was in a house, and I when I started working there, we were still at the house. Yeah. And there's been a few houses, so I wasn't at the very. The original house, the employees lived and worked there. Like, it, like oh, it, I think I did know that it was like both. And I was, was that like I think Counter Strike. I think the Optic Boys when we had a Counter Strike team, I think they played. Yeah, that would make sense. They played in maybe the first house. They definitely played in a summit. I can't remember because there's like a a picture of like Tarek and all the guys <laughs> like in their Optic jerseys on couches. Dude, and, it was like like my first summit. I worked technically with Summit of Power. My I think my first summit as an employee was smash maybe maybe it was counter-strike summit or Dota. no it was, it was like dota summit eight or yeah. something it was like dota, dota summit and i remember just like like walking around and i'm just like holy fuck like the thing that's on tv is now i'm in the thing on tv like the thing that i was watching on the screen <laughs> yeah, i'm walking in i feel like i was in vr like, i i feel like i was yeah. like holy I've fuck helped, i'm like too. touching this table i'm like i watched this table on tv i didn't realize it was wood yeah like no, th- <laughs> I remember when I first visited the Optic House, Hector was like, all right, let me give you the tour. He's running in, I don't know if you're a actor, but he's very I like, not, I bam, not. like matter of fact all the time. And he's like, here's, here's this, 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 that. And he was like, if you need anything here, I got a dip. And then I sat down next to Nick. I had just met him. And he was like, so was that tour weird? And I was like, dude, I already knew where everything was. <laughs> like I had watched all the videos, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like I was like a fan of everything. So like him telling me everything, I was just like playing along like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, I know I know the exact feeling of, of, of what you're talking about. And then, so working at Summit, did, did you feel, was there ever, like, were you happy the whole time at Summit? Basically, or? yeah. I yeah. think like, like um, I was between Summit and Team Liquid at the time okay. and, and I was I did like a week at Team Liquid like doing a trial run for a job there basically and I remember I was having a really hard time choosing because the offer from Team Liquid was going to be more money right. but the offer from Summit felt like it was a little bit more like this product that I'm watching like, like I care about the products right. they're making and maybe yeah. that's better but I was young I didn't like I was just out of college I literally was I hadn't graduated yet I was graduating like in wow. three months and I was like uh, I don't know I don't want to Holy shit. Um, and I my my ex well it's funny like my boss at, at summit who is no longer my boss but i but now works at off brand I, I still okay. work with him um he told me as the person trying to hire me he was like this is what you're gonna get out of working there this is what you're gonna get out of working here you just need to decide which one you want and working there he was like you're gonna get really really good at one thing like you will become a master of one thing maybe it'll be editing maybe yeah. it'll be uh videography maybe it'll be directing He's like, but if you come here, you're going to do everything. So you will get pretty good at like everything in the video pipeline because you'll have to be, you'll have to do you it. You have to do it. And at the time I was so like, I don't really know exactly what I want. So right. I, it felt like a better choice to just go do everything. And that is what I fucking did when I got there. Like it was just like, there was shoots where I was directing, holding the boom pole. Uh, I, I wrote the idea. I'm also going to edit this later. That's and there's literally, n- you're no one ex- else in the room. You're just explaining Matt's <laughs> job. Matt's editing this. He fucking... And and to be honest, like over time, that sucks. Like over time, that does get like, why am I fucking... No, Matt loves it. it. Yeah, no, yeah right? Great. Yeah, it's always good. Yeah, Never bad. That's my guy. Never bad. Uh, <laughs> Never have mental breakdowns but, in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> but when I, when I finally quit, if you asked me at that point, I would have said, I don't want to quit. I just have to. Like, because what happened was basically we started the yard and I'm doing mogul moves full time. Holy shit. So I was in the yard full time. I was doing mogul moves full time and I was still full time at Summit. See, I didn't know that. Like driving to the office every day. It it wasn't a a remote job. Wow. And so I got to a point where I was like looking at the pie chart of my life and looking at like, like, what do, do I even like pay attention to my health? Do I, like, what is my time spent doing? And it, all of it was work. All of it. Like I had no, I barely, I wasn't even sleeping much. So I was just like, something has to go makes no sense for that to be the yard right now. Like we just started it, it like exploded immediately. And I'm like, I need to like nurture this thing. Uh, Mogul moves at the time, it wasn't a big enough like slice. Like if I got rid of it, I'd still have the kind of the same problem. Yeah. And summit, I was just like, this has kind of run its course for me. Like I've done this for years now. And my big problem at summit, because I did not work on the broadcast side of things. I worked on the video pre-recorded content side of things, which are, they work together, but they're very different departments. Yep. It always really bothered me 
that we would work really, really hard on stuff, make some of the better content in, in gaming and esports, and then after the broadcast, no one would watch it. Yeah. These things would go die on YouTube, like with embarrassingly low numbers because Summit had this like really bad, like no one really like fleshed out a content strategy ever. And and we we upload content to the same channels we upload VODs of tournaments to. And so like some channels get thousands of uploads in a day and some of those are content. Like how are you right, going to find yeah. that? And, and the algorithm for that channel was fucked and blah, blah, blah. And I got to a point where I was like, one, I really need to go focus on this yard thing. I think it can be big, and I think it could be, like, the main thing I do. And two, like, I want to make things people watch. Like, I want yeah. to be working on stuff that isn't just, like, for the passion. And sure, it gets appreciated when it goes live on a broadcast, and there's, like, you know, 80 to 100,000 viewers looking at it. Yeah. But I knew I was able to make stuff that more people saw, and I just – I really, really wanted that. I guess I didn't realize that there was – an overlap. I thought it was. Oh yeah. You guys are all summit. Bam. You guys are all mogul moves. And when I quit, I gave them. Well, I quit way later than Aiden and Slime. Than the other two. Okay. Okay. Um, I didn't. Qu they quit before the yard. They were like. Oh, that's what, okay. Maybe that's why I'm thinking. Yeah. That. And, okay. I, and for me, uh, Lud Lud did like offer me a job a couple times. The original thing he wanted was he wanted me to lead design for their merch company, and I was like. I'm not a designer. Yeah. And I did do all of Ludwig's first drops, like all of his original merches. I designed all that, but I'm not a good designer and I, I'm just capable enough. I, I've opened right. Adobe enough times. I can probably figure it out. Um, and I was like, I don't think that's like a stepping stone of like what I want to do next. I think I, I really wanted to be directing. Like I wanted to be yeah. like, that's all I want to be doing. I just want to be directing. Uh, the yard was never part of the plan. Like the, being talent or in front of the camera or any, it was never part of my plan. It was like always mm, like, it's kind of bullshit. What do you think? Why do you think that? I think you wanted to be on camera. You I can think? tell. I can just I tell. Yeah, because I'm, you were, I'm an electric factory. You're you can, a phase you up sniper. Even then, I was you off were, camera. Yeah, but you were the talent. You were the talent in your own montages. Oh, man, it's it does sound sweet to be like I didn't ever wanted to be on camera though. It sounds sweet. Yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess you're uh, Matt does the same thing. I guess you know more about me. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I'm not. I'm not saying I know what more do you about consider, you. Well, just kind of calling ask you bullshit. Question. I'm just calling your bluff. That's, what, ask, that's no, all I'm doing. I'm I'm happy. I have friends who keep me in check, and you're one of them. Yeah. I have a question for you. What do you can What do you consider yourself more of, behind the scenes or talent? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. Oh, we're on a podcast. You're just gonna say nothing. That's cool. <laughs> oh, what a fun product we're making okay, together. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, it's hard. <laughs> it's a hard question to answer because on uh, when it comes to TST. Obviously, I'm on camera, but I pretty much, it's both. I'm both. Is wow. that the answer? Wow. Is you, that the answer you're looking for? It's like, you know, my biggest flaw is I show up too early. I work too hard. Yeah. Uh, uh, too handsome. We have limited time on this fucking earth together. Just pick one. What do you think is more by 1% in your by, head? By 1%? What is, what is more? Behind the scenes. You think you're more behind the scenes? No, I don't think I'm more. I think I'm more valuable behind the scenes. Wait, more valuable or more actually what you're doing actively? Fuck, man. I don't know. It's weird. I mean, I, I just spent a month of my life doing... I just spent two months of my life doing six events mm -hmm. that I'm not playing in. or, But I, I guess I am also on camera. So it's like I spend way more time organizing the events than... like If you were to ask Aiden that question, what, would he, what do you think he would say? Because he does... I'm assuming he does the majority of the planning. behind the scenes. That's okay. Then I... When it comes to streaming... On camera, when it comes to events and stuff that I do here, I'm behind the scenes. So it's weird because I have two different things. Who does the most work for TST? Me. You hear that? That's absolutely correct. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you said that's absolutely correct. Yeah, Blake, uh, Blake's here. So you're also behind the scenes for TST? Yeah. So maybe it's behind the scenes. Yeah, behind. I would say behind the scenes then. You, you've, yeah. But yeah. What if I said bullshit? Then Just to see how you reacted. I would I would respect it because I, I still am. This was on, all a long haul to get you back. To get me back yeah, to say I bullshit. I wasn't even listening to your answers. I yeah, I know. I know. Waiting for you to stop talking. But I, I was just <laughs> I was just waiting for you because you because I never said I didn't yeah. want to be in front of the camera. Mm. I just said I do more. But you were like I never want to be in front of the camera. I don't want people to know who I am, which I think is kind of bullshit. You're the funny guy. You're the you're the fucking witty, I don't, the cool guy. Oh my god! I'm not but everything Nick I say. Falco. You're everything, Falco. everything I say now is gonna you're gonna take it. I can't. <laughs> I've been trapped. I'm truly trapped. <laughs> I did. I, I truly never uh, thought of it that way. Like I like I wasn't casting in melee at all. I wasn't like yeah, yeah. like I, I do think like I did care a lot about playing 
games. Like I, I've yeah. always cared, but never because I wanted to be a pro. You're a gamer. I just all I just I hate losing, man. I get that. I just hate losing so much more than I like winning. Yeah. So you're just gaming. I'm just gaming. Yeah. And then you stop gaming, and then Modern Warfare Three I, Two comes out. I took a. My friends all like to say right now that I am back. They keep saying Nick's back, and they're telling all the group chats we're all in. Hey, by the way, Nick's back. And mm-hmm. everyone's like, "What does that mean?" It's like, I took a big break from gaming, probably like six months. Mm-hmm. Where I just wasn't playing any video games. And then, and, I brought you back. and then Hitch comes walking along with back. the bus and haircut. And he says, he says, haircut. yo, no cap, low key. You want to get your dope up? Nope. Don't be checked. Join my event. And I was like, what are you talking about? Don't laugh, man. No, I'll give you five bucks. Man. Sorry, man. Uh, man, I can hear you laughing. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so now I'm addicted again. Do you like that? I do like, you like that. You're my fucking- I like that. I like that you're back. Like you're back. You're, I feel like you're back home. I feel like you took this. You took this you hiatus. You ruined my life. I don't, you took this hiatus playing your fun, like car- your fun cartoon games, right? And your fun. I'm gonna make shit stuff. But now you've come back home yeah. to where the there <clears throat> to where we are. Call of Duty makes me degenerate, dude. <laughs> I, I literally had degenerate coming out. I, of <laughs> I the game like I've been queuing public fucking matches. <laughs> And like getting on mic and being like, "You guys are fucking ass. no. You guys, you, are, you guys are. You ass. got back into the. You're talking shit and pops. I am talking off stream. Shit. I'm unmuting my mic and being like, "Is anyone talking in here?" So I can talk shit to that guy. No, I, dude, I'm bad right now. Oh, right, you're really going for it. Wait, do we have more coming up? He's a bartender. I'm a. I thought I had to make this last the whole thing. No, 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 no. This is what I'm downing this. <laughs> I want. I want like eight of these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Allow me to interrupt the podcast for just a split second to talk about Center. And while I'm talking, you guys get to watch Austin Cox make some wonderful drinks behind the bar that includes Center Sparkling CBD. There's a bunch of different products that Center offers. We got the sparkling water in the, the regular in the black can or the sugar-free in the white can. We've got the instant powders as well, three different flavors of those. Relax, recover and also balance. Go to findyourcenter.com and also follow them on Instagram at findyourcenter. Around the Bar is presented by Center. Center offers all natural hemp-derived CBD beverages with premium ingredients to help you find clarity and focus in your everyday life. At your bar, Center can be a great addition to your mixed drinks. Center can also offer a tasty alcohol alternative. A favorite mix of mine is the unsweetened CBD sparkling drink with the pomegranate flavored relaxed CBD powder. Definitely go check that out. Take a sip, take a moment and find your center. Use the code OPTIC25 for 25% off of your first order today. Thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble and for watching Austin mix up that wonderful CBD drink. All right guys, back to the pod. Um, that's really funny. So you are back, but let's go back to um, slime for the the audio listeners. Yeah, do it. So good. Slime, Aiden, leave Summit. Yeah. Because probably what, six months or a year before? Well, slime's a little bit different of a story. Slime started Mogul Moves. Holy shit, didn't know that. So slime came to Ludwig in his bedroom because we all lived together in his underwear. That was a crazy sentence. And slime said in his underwear, he said, Ludwig. I have a PowerPoint presentation I made for you. Will you look at it with me? Did you bring? Did you bring one for here? By the way, because I did bring you a gift. I forgot. <laughs> I brought you a gift. Oh my god! Is it time now? Do you or want it wait? now? I'm down if you want to do it now. Or, no, tell your slime story before. Okay. Before I, I turn it it's into it's a good a, gift. You're gonna be really happy. Okay. Okay. Um, it's a gift I've only given like two people in my life. Holy um, shit! Okay. Sex. <laughs> Less than two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, nah. That was a cod. Uh, you said that was a cod joke, so I thought I would throw a cod joke, yeah, which is the yeah. low hanging fruit. The no, I can, do, I, can do joke. A, I can do a cod joke, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, okay, so Hitch uh, walks in a bar and uh, and he uh, he busts a huge load everywhere. That's my. Uh, <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> exactly. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Matt That's likes that one. Matt likes that one. God. Uh, okay. All right. Well, it might have happened. Yeah. Okay. Slime. Let's um, talk about slime now. Slime walked in Ludwig's room, underwear on, PowerPoint presentation in hand. He says, yes. "Look at this." And it was slime was like, "I want to leave my job at BTS and I want to work for you and I will be your manager." And here's all the things I want to do. And here's all the ways I can help you. 
and Ludwig said, yep, let's do it. And then he left, and he started working for Ludwig. Aiden was much later down the line. Okay. Ludwig, like, as, like, a passing joke one day, was like, I have this idea for a company, but I'll probably never do it. And it was like, what if we started a merch company that uh, handled merchandise for all the streamers that are, like, available right now? Because no one's really doing that for them, and they all want merch, but they're too lazy to make it, and I want merch. So if we figure it all out ourselves, we could do it for them. Ah, never mind. Dumb idea. And who then, said, and then who Aiden, is this Ludwig said Lud- okay. And then Aiden was like, eyes open, like, wait, that's a great idea. Uh, I will do that. I can do that. <laughs> and that he sat with that for like four months. And then he was that's like, so wait, I want to leave my job at Summit and pitch him doing that. And that's what Aiden does now. That's, that's that is Aiden's job oh, at I didn't know that. Moves. Oh, that's cool. Because he 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 used to do that and events, and then he recently stopped doing events. Who does events now? Uh off brand. Oh, oh, the whole company. Yeah. Okay, okay. That makes sense. But he was doing the sole, like all Ludwig events were like tournament organized. Holy by shit, him. I bet you he's so much more happier. Yeah. He's his his mental is probably so so much better. Yeah, he, well, my, he's my little guy. He's soul searching. <laughs> he's soul he's searching. the youngest on the pod. So I, oh, is he? Yeah, I mean by a year. No. Oh. Um. Uh, uh. Thank you so much, Austin. Wait, what was I gonna? Sure. Oh, I have a present for you. Hey, to our health, to the Cheers. knights, we'll never remember, and the friends will never forget. Is that a like I, a fat, I, I fat just, boy thing? I just made that up. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's my thing. You know. All right. Ludwig used to do the. Uh, is it from I Am Legend? What movie is it from? He used to do this really long monologue where he'd start a toast, but it was like a five minute monologue. <laughs> what? And then it was like a, like it was like a I don't think it it like, can't be from I am it was, Legend. It was like never lie, cheat, steal, or drink. And it's like unless you lie with a lover. Or isn't, steal like Isn't the, I Am Legend the zombie movie? I don't remember which one it is. Okay. It's some, I was like, it can't some, be that because that some, movie is one person. I think it's a Will Smith movie. I, I okay, can't okay, remember okay, what okay. movie, but he used to do the I whole have thing. No idea. Yeah, it's a good loving bit. Um <clears throat> okay, I have a gift for you. Okay, what's uh, up? Okay, so and then we'll get back to the. I, was, I like, I I like when I when people invite me to stuff. Okay. I like to try to bring them a little something. Usually, my bit is I only buy them a gift that I find in the airport. So, like when I'm at the airport, okay. I will find it. But usually, but it works better when there's more people because you can like embed some jokes. Like like when we when we went to see Mr. Beast, I got him a magazine at the airport that had his on the cover. That's good. And I was like, That's <laughs> your gift. <laughs> this, this um, is for you. But for you, I thought that would be a little less, it would be more of like a joke that lasts five seconds and then it'd be over. So I was like, I'm going to give him a real gift. Okay. So I was like looking through my bedroom, as you do when you get real gifts, and you go, like, what can I, I was like, what can I fucking get? And I looked through my drawer, and I found something you that said, I forgot that I had. You found something in your drawer that my you're giving drawer. me. Do you want to guess first? or you? Because you won't get it, but you no, want to guess first? No, I don't want to I don't, okay. don't want to get so, pencil sharpener. Smash Summit 10. The... The theme was, uh, it was like tarot cards and like, uh, or no, that was CS Summit, but it was like cards. It was a card game themed Super Smash Brothers event, like poker. (laughs) Uh, It's a great example. Um, And we made an item, we made a merch item that I think you, I think it was, you couldn't buy it. It was just like randomly chosen winners got sent Super Smash Brothers playing cards. No fucking that shot. That we made no. for Summit. And Wait, so really? I brought you one of the only packs. No fucking shot. That is left. We have, I probably what? have, I probably have like four more packs of these that are in existence and then they're all gone. And this is unopened. So I can't open it. You should open it. I should open it. Wait, I mean, you could keep. Is it a playing could, card? It, it, they're playing cards? Of the players. Of the players. So, oh, so, so they're no like idea who's in cards. here. They're all different. <laughs> Wait, I, I don't even know who's I, in here. There, and you could, you could have hollows. We no. make, there's hollows, but they're rare. What the fuck? This Not is so all weird. packs have hollows. I like just did something. It like is. This. It is like actual. And how did you guys do this? Uh, oh, I don't know the deck order. You know how like with Pokemon, you like you put it in a certain order and then you go. There, yeah. There is a de- there's a deck order. I don't know it. Oh, there's like a there's like. So a, you're gonna see if you have a hollow, you'll see it early. Unfortunately. But, oh my god! So you gotta open. Yeah, I cracked that. This open. is fucking fire, dude. It's so weird. I just did something. You like don't this. have to open it, by the way. If you, but we're on a fucking podcast. So I feel like you should. But no, I, I'm gonna do. But it. But you could I'm keep it closed forever and have a rare item. But no. the cards are kind of rare. I don't know. Yeah, the cards have to be rare. Okay. This is actually super hype. I didn't. I thought you were gonna bring me like a troll gift. To be fair, I don't know how to open it because there's no, there's no <laughs> little. Oh, wait, ah. ASMR. Put it in the next to the mic. Yeah. yeah let me... Oh, oh I'm so I'm nutting. <laughs> I'm nutting. Like, that's so good. <laughs> that is so good, dude. You guys sealed the fuck out of these. Yeah, we handed them. So it was kinda, yeah, we didn't we didn't hair, use straight, like a, hair straightener. No, like a sealer, like a like a package sealer. Oh, we used a hair straightener. We j- I literally just did this like two weeks ago with optic people. Oh my god. 
Dude, you guys straighten the. F are you guys wait, what's sealed the, the fuck out of these? Having so much trouble. <gasps> Wait, wait, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. That's, that's the hollow. That's the hollow. That's you should flip hollow. it over. You should flip it over. I'm going to. I'm going to. Okay. I just need to get it open. <laughs> Dude, these are badass. I forgot how cool they were. This happened such a long time ago. Here, you open them so I don't b bend it. Because I, I also can't look down to not open it. Just... Yeah, I got you. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So the, 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 the rare is on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, okay. examine them. Have fun with it. Yeah, yeah. So one. Dude, that's so fucking hype. Smash Summit 10. Is that, a, is that a hollow? Oh, shit. No, you you have more than one hollow. More than one hollow? Yeah. Oh, a hollow none? Yeah, show camera. Yeah, show camera. That's so fire. And they all have stats. They all have, yeah, they all have <laughs> stats. I think, I think I wrote the descriptors for everyone. I can't remember. Swagger, flip a coin. If heads, your opponent loses the game and gets clipped on Reddit. I definitely didn't write that. <laughs> <laughs> no, a holographic nun, a holographic mango. You got a holographic. A mango? holographic That's the rarest card. Is it really? There's, no, there's one more. The ultra rare is there's a holographic fizzy. Okay. Oh, that's. And that's I don't. High. I think one person got one or something. So this is like super rare. That is second most rare card. Oh my god. A holographic mango. A holographic wait, fizzy. Wait, another holographic? Oh, no, shit. you're fucking with me. Oh my god. <laughs> You fucking got my ass. I was like, no. Because that would mean that no one else got it. Really? I think there's one. There's one hollow? Hollow fizzy. It, oh, 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 oh. Uh, stomp knee. Nice. That shit's hype. That's hype. That's classic. Who did the artwork for that? We got a, we got a few artists. We got a few artists. Uh, bam pools. Wait. 8 a.m. pools. 8 a.m. pools. <laughs> it looks like bam. It's also a tournament. 8 a.m. Oh, the TO it, picture? <laughs> yeah. That's fire. Uh, pew, pew, you. Classic. Super. Kevin Toy. Probably the nicest guy I've ever met in esports. Very nice guy. And then Ginger, another Falco. There you go. And finally, Plup. Hollow Holographic Plup. Plup. Wow. I can't believe you pulled the Hollow Mango. Hollow Mango is. Cr I thought you were like. I thought you were fucking with me that it's like everyone got a mango. No, no. The, you actually. Like the, all decks were different. This is a crazy deck then. There's a bunch of different. This cards. is like a God pack. That's a pretty good pack. Yeah. Holy shit. All right. Well, I need to find sleeves or something. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Th that was very, very nice. Very nice. I thought you would enjoy it. I, 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 I do. Uh, I appreciate your your involvement in the Smash community. This is I my... love. I love that. I really love that. I'm going to save that. <laughs> put, I'll put it on mantle. the bar. Put where drinks are. <laughs> put it on my mantle. <laughs> It'll be over there where it's safe. Yeah, Mango. I mean, you know. Big fan of Mango. Mango was the first person, the the first person to come on the podcast, and his episode did really, really well. And I'm very appreciative of it. And now I have a holographic Mango card. Thanks Mango's to that guy. Thanks to Nick and Falco. You know about how I I've told this story a billion times, but you know how I I <clears throat> I'm the reason Mango lost Evo. Uh, you know how I don't know if I know that. So uh, when I used to, when I, er, my early early melee community days, I used to make custom controllers. Uh, and I would like hand paint all of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I made one that I sold to a guy. And it was a Falco controller. And the guy was like, "Hey, are you going to Evo? Because I can buy, I can pick it up from you there." And I was like, "Yeah, I am." He's like, "Okay, would you do me a favor? And would you get it signed by Mango? And then I'll buy it after you sign, I, after he signs it." And I, he was too nervous or whatever. And I was like, "Yeah, I can do that. I don't care." So I didn't know Mango at all. I was just, I was like a O2 shitter. I go up to Mango. I had to wait in the Mango line. Right, uh, as one does. Uh, and I go up to Mango, and I'm like, hey, can you sign this? He's like, yeah. And because I was like, I was making the controllers, I had like a special pen that was like oil-based ink so that it would stay on the controller and not just rub off. So he goes to do it, instantly breaks the pen, and then ink goes all <laughs> over the controller, completely ruining it. What? Also all over his hands, and it's like thick oil paint. Like it doesn't just come off. Like it, it just like sticks to you. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, it was totally his fault. Like, he fucked all this up. But I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm, like, apologizing for something I didn't do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, we both go to the bathroom because I'm getting it on my hands trying to take the controller, like, out of his hands. And then uh, we both go to the bathroom. We're, like, washing our hands awkwardly. I'm like, oh, my God. The guy does not buy the controller for me anymore. He did not think the story oh. was funny. I lose out on, like, the 200 bucks or whatever. And then uh, if you go look at all the VODs from that, like, all, like, the BTS footage that people, like, Cassidy was shooting and stuff, his fingernails are all black. Because he couldn't get it off. Oh no! And uh, I like to say that I I fucked him. Like I made him think about something else that wasn't melee. Mm. Oh, I thought you were gonna say his hands were still oily, and that's why. Well, I think they were a little bit. Oh, he couldn't get it who all did, out. Who did he lose to? I don't remember. It was Evo twenty fifteen, I think, or sixteen. If it's H box, it's your fault. Probably. 
<laughs> it wasn't the one he got camped, but it was, you know, he lost. Damn. And I was like, I think that's my fault. Well. My fault, OG. Now I have a, uh, now I have a mango card. Yeah. And that's very nice. You're that guy. I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if everybody wants to buy it, I <laughs> <laughs> I would actually respect that. Um, uh, so let, going back to how the transition, mm-hmm. uh, you told me the, those two guys how they started with with Ludwig, and then see, I thought for some reason I thought it was like, yo, I you're you know you're friends with this guy, he blows the fuck up, and now he's like, hey, I need help, I need my three friends to come on, and then bam, that's how it happened. But I guess it was more gradual than that. No, I think. Uh Maybe if you asked Ludwig, like, and he and he thought about an answer, like, maybe he would say, like, it was important to him that he support his friends and, like, share the wealth, if you will. I think he's always been that kind of guy. Like, he, uh, he's always been the type of guy who, like, when he sort of comes up, like, he really tries try to, like, spread that to, like, the people he cares about. So you could, maybe he would say something like that. But I think more realistically, like, what was part of it at the time was just, he did. He needed help. Like, he was trying to do stuff. He had ideas, but he couldn't do it alone. And it's really hard to do any sort of company management when you are the talent, when everything revolves around you going live that day for eight hours and, like, having a relationship on top of that. And so he needed help. And for me, uh, I, I, I basically always said no until the yard because, for me, I was like, I really like what I'm doing. That was the original thing we were talking about. I really like what I'm doing at Summit. Even when I quit Summit, I gave them three months. I said, I'm quitting. Yeah, I'm going to some... give you three months to find someone to replace me, and I'll stay here. Yeah. So I did that. I did like the full, all three of them for three months, and it was like the worst three months. Really? Was, like, I was like just dying. I was just, I had no time. I was, we were like, I think my last event was, um, I don't know if you ever saw Mango Shab, Excellent Adventure. It was like a content piece we did, but it was like the, it was the last thing I worked on there was that, that it was like Mango and Shab time travel to kill Baby Zane. Um, <laughs> see, see, I, I watched a lot of Summit in retrospect because I can't watch a lot of stuff on the weekends because all of our stuff's on the weekends mm-hmm. as well. So I watch a lot of in and and then you know probably the the, the problem that you had. Uh, I was a part of that problem where I just watched the sets and I didn't watch any of the skits. So that's fair. I apologize. That's, no, it's okay. I mean, I, but that, I watched. I'm mean, gonna watch some of the stuff like when I could. I, it, Blake, it, Blake watched a <laughs> lot of shit. Blake watched a lot of stuff. It was it was a reality check. Like I used to watch it and like rationalize in all these different ways. Like, well, they're probably not watching because, you know, are this is bad. They're probably not. Watching. And I really had to think about it. I'm like, a big question I asked myself, which I think like people who make content for Smash like don't ask themselves enough, is like, if every single person in the market that you were making a video for watched your video how many views would it have? And so if you look at Melee... The absolute ceiling. The absolute fucking ceiling. Mm -hmm. Is it even a million views? I don't think so. Right? So like when you... you gotta think that So when you're not eating off of the shit you're making in Smash, you have to ask yourself like, like, is the problem the content? Or am, am I just like not thinking about what I'm making and its value to the more general audience of people who might find this interesting? And I think that people don't try to generalize their content enough to make it interesting to more people, or they view it as, well, I want to make content that's like for the fan, which is cool. But yeah. if you want to live off of it and you want it to be the thing you always get to do, you have, you have to figure out both. And I think that when I was at yeah. Summit, I realized, I was like, what we're making is so niche. Like, it is, like yeah. a content piece. But it's so good. A content piece for fucking... Axe and Mango are parodying. It's like you have to have seen the movie we're parodying. You have to know yep. who Axe is. You have, to know, you have to know what Smash Summit is, which means you have to know what Melee is. You have to be watching the event that yeah. day. Like all these things have to fall into place for anyone to even consume the thing you're making. So like when I, I realized that one day, I'm like, I don't think there's anything I can do to get people to watch my stuff here. I think all I can do is leave and make other stuff. Huh. Wow. And so that, that was my, that's what I thought. Like, yeah. You could argue like, well, we could have revamped the content department and like had new goals of like maybe uh, being more content focused and like not doing these events and blah, blah, blah. Maybe. But uh, it didn't feel realistic in like the time frame with the budgets and like all that. It just didn't, it didn't feel realistic there. And I, and with the yard kind of starting up and I'm like, wait, I'm making more on the podcast yeah. I do that my, going good than over my here. full-time job. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I, I was like, it's time. And uh, it was really, really hard. Like, I, I think for me, it was... W- Aiden and Slime were ready to leave. Yeah. For me, I was not ready to leave. I, I, but a, a big realization that I had, which I felt like was really important, was I realized I had never taken a risk in my life. Mm-hmm. I realized I was like, I've never jumped out of a nest 
unless there was another nest I was jumping into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never just jumped out and been like, can I fly? So you didn't view the, and you didn't view the yard as the nest. The reason why I didn't at the time, it's really easy now to be like, it was obviously another nest. But at <laughs> yeah. the time, the reason why I didn't feel that way was because one, it's so, at the time, it was so attached to whether or not Ludwig wanted to continue doing it. For, ah, like true. we yeah. just started it and I'm like, if he says I don't want to do it anymore, this thing's just going to end and like, I won't have a job. Yeah. Um, and mogul moves didn't have like the promise back then that it did like more now like that like off brand has kind of provided more security to it and uh and also like sure the yard was like starting to do well but it was like you know it's a fucking podcast like am i gonna want to do that in a year right. Are all four of us all gonna want to do it in a year yeah. like it's at, i'm at the will of so many people's individual decisions that it felt like a risk it felt like something that was like i'm choosing my passion project that's, yeah. that's doing well and and is a better bet than like trying to sell my like painted art somewhere. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's a better bet than a lot of stuff. But I, I'm choosing my passion project over a job I really like that's pretty secure. Yeah. Um it's funny how like it basically became the opposite where like Summit ended up going under and yep. this thing. And Unfortunately. they're not related at all. Like yeah, it was fucking awful. Yeah. But like it, you know it no matter how certain I was at the time that like one was a risk and the other was the secure thing. It, it ended up being the opposite, the where I would have lost my job at Summit, yeah, um, and potentially left behind an opportunity to like make yeah. this thing with my friends. So I think I learned like a big lesson that day. It was like if you have like this thing in your gut that's like I need to do this thing, like it's actually more important to try that thing, yeah. and potentially go broke or lose your job than it is to like make seventy five thousand yeah. dollars and like feel secure and and. So so two questions: when when the yard starts, do you guys? One, you touched on it a little bit. Uh, were you guys collectively, the three of you, were you nervous that it was going to be... The four? The, the, uh, besides Ludwig. Oh. Were you guys nervous that it was going to be the Ludwig podcast? Like, was that ever a thought, or did you guys know that you guys were talented enough to, like, make it its own? Both are true. Yeah. I, I, I think that we... Uh, Ludwig is very... I think, like, like, one of Ludwig's, like, biggest strengths, I think, is... He's an amazing performer. Like he is, like I think the best of all four of us by far. I, not even close, actually. It's not like a ranking. It's like he is the best of the four of us at like you put him on stage and you say be entertaining and he he goes and he's yeah. entertaining and everyone loves him and and uh, I've never really heard behind the scenes like bad shit about him or anyone not liking him. Like he's very entertaining. He's very forward. He's very honest. Uh, and he's very good under a spotlight. And that's I think what, what he's always wanted to do. Like even in college, he was doing improv. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's always wanted to like be in a spotlight. And I think he he's really good there. And I think that for us, so I say that because the follow up is when Ludwig's like a lot of times in the early days when Ludwig's like making jokes on stream, making big audiences of people laugh. It's stuff that like our friend group. Right. It's like a joke in our friend group that he's like taking to his stream, and then like the world is laughing at it. And we always kind of felt like like our sense of humor is all kind of one. We all spend so much time together. We've lived with each other for so many years now. Like we have this like sort of chemistry and this relationship and this sense of humor and these like inside outside jokes that we believe that like we could take to a product like a podcast. And we've always like looked at it as like podcasting is like the easiest thing anyone can do. Like it is it, it, people, if anyone tries to convince you that like a podcast is hard work, it just isn't it, yeah. at least for the actual talking of on it, the it's, surface it's, it's like not hard. the easiest thing ever is to buy a microphone yeah. and talk about yourself and yeah uh, it's like <laughs> holy yeah. Yeah, yeah so we had like a lot of guilt going into the show of like why us like why are we so important that people should want to listen to us and so we we really thought about like what makes this show special how do we make it entertaining how do we like bring something to it and i think like that's the one thing that has like one of the like, one of the things that has never ever changed with the show is every single week we show up and we're like what is going to make the episode good and funny? What is like, we will say no to famous guests if we don't think they're going to be funny. Like we don't care yeah. as much about like what they're going to bring. And there's been outlier examples of like some people were like, well, we got to have them on. But generally it's like, we have to believe at some level there's going to be comedy that emerges from that. Yeah, It's not, yeah. we hate doing interviews. We hate doing like, tell us things you've told other people, but for us that we get the views. Right, exactly. Um, well, I mean. I don't do interviews a lot. Okay, okay. You're safe. I was like, I don't know about shit. everyone else. Like, that's not. I don't know about everyone else. <laughs> I'm uh, asking Mango, like, <laughs> why Falco? Mango, so there's zero in the name. <laughs> uh, I actually didn't ask that. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I, yeah, I think for us, like, 
we all we were always very confident that like the show would be good. That's actually one of the only things we didn't really question. We're like, the show will be good. We know the show will be good. But how do we get people? How do we convince people to actually watch it? Yeah. But we did have the fear that like Ludwig would overshadow. Like we really did not want it to be Ludwig and the boys, <laughs> like the band, basically. <laughs> what? 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 Why is Why is he looking at me laughing? Because Blake likes to call TST Hitch and the Boys sometimes. No. That's, I didn't say it. Blake said it. Yeah. Um, it's a thing. I didn't say it. I, I, it's, tough, it's tough to feel that way. But That's I, but, so funny. But I, I can't believe Blake's here for that. I think it was never like a problem or anything. It was never like a thing that like kept me up at night. But I think what we were always really confident about is like that will change. Like we, we always knew like that will just change with time. Yeah. And we can't just be mad about that when – Ludwig was an enormous spring launch pad for us. Like him having such a huge audience of people who like liked his stuff, it's the only reason the Yard was able to immediately start with viewership. So, but it was on us to like Ludwig's philosophy with the Yard has always been like pa past the fact that he a surprising amount does really give a shit about every episode. Yeah. Looks at how they're performing, looks at the thumbnails, like talks to me about stuff we could do better. Um uh but his thing has always been I am executive producer. Here's money. You guys need to make this thing float. Like you guys need to push yeah. this thing forward. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I've I've always felt like I'm really appreciative for sort of the opportunities that like he's afforded us and like what his sort of success has like how that's like spilled into our world and stuff. But I've all but I think like Ludwig's kind of a lucky guy in the sense that all of his best friends are working professionals in media yeah. who happen to do things that he needs. We're not like friends who like, yeah, I became the video guy because I knew the most about, it's like, yeah. I was a director already. Like, right, right. And, I, and he was like, come direct for me. And I'm like, okay. Um, so I think the yard was just like, yeah, we've got a creative, a writer, we have a director, we have a event organizer and we have like a fucking star talent. Like yeah. how could this not be a great combination yeah, yeah, of people? Yeah. Uh, and I was always confident that like, despite the things that are you know somewhat annoying about it feeling like people are gonna, uh, receive it as Ludwig and the boys. Uh, ultimately, I knew the product was good, or at least that I liked it. Like I knew, like when I would listen to an episode, I'm laughing. Like I'm right, laughing yeah. at like our stuff. And I think that like with the yard, my philosophy that was kind of always just like make something that all of my best friends would want to listen to and laugh at, and other people will like it. Like yeah. I think I have like somewhat like specific specific and like good taste. If I like it, people will like it. Yeah. I try not to think too much about like what is a big audience gonna like. Right, yeah, yeah. I think it makes something that I don't care about. Like it, it contributes to something that I just don't really care. Yeah, about. you guys have hit. I mean, you guys have a really. I think that's the, that's a that's a fun part about listening to your podcast is it does feel like the lunch table. Like it feels yeah, yeah. like your little glass table in the backyard. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. It feels like you're just chilling, listening to people, which is the ultimate goal of what you guys are probably going for. But I also have another question: is how parasocial does that get very very because we, i found myself even and i've been working in this industry for a long time mm -hmm. and there were there were times where like you know i'm just driving because i have like an hour commute back and forth so i have you know a rotation of podcasts you guys are on there and there'll be times where i'm like laughing and shit and i'm like holy shit i don't know these guys like at <laughs> all yeah but like it feels like i do and so i can only imagine having you know dealing with the stuff that we deal with here at optic, like going to events and stuff and people come up and some people are a little too friendly and you know, we don't even do content that's as almost as that like intimate as you guys do. Like we do like, yeah, we do like bits and stuff and like podcasts where we talk about esports or we do stuff like, like different like productions, but you guys just sit and chat. Yeah. So I've, I've always been interested, like how, how have you had, how many weird experiences have you had or oh, experiences where it a feels ton. like people are, are the fifth on the podcast. <laughs> well, that second part I've never felt, but I, I think that, you know, we've had stalkers. We've had, yeah. I've had, I had a person who, um, their profile picture was me. They would post like where I live. They, mm. they would tell me, uh, they wanted to like kill my girlfriend and they're trying to, they're telling me they're going to send a bomb to my house. Holy and, shit. And I was just like, that's all that's chill. Bring, uh, bring girls. Uh, <laughs> and we're straight. BYOB, not bombs. Uh, <laughs> uh, which uh, we ended up winning that battle. We found out who they were. Really? Yeah. It was, you never win those, so it was pretty cool. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. and we, you know, we've been spotted three times, um, which is not, not chill. Fun. Yeah. Not fun. 
I do attribute to uh, the funniest banter I have ever had with any of my friends was handcuffed in the back of a cop car with Ludwig. Really? Oh my God, it was electric. <laughs> it was like, I was just like, dude, I was like, do you think if I call the police station, they'll feel so bad about what they've done, they'll give me the recording of the cop car? Because that is a that is a podcast. Really, it was so fucking funny. Because it was, I think it was the second or third time we had been swatted. So we're not even scared of it anymore. Yeah, we're just like just we're like, just in cop cars cuffed, and like, and I'm like, like this sucks. It's two a.m. This fucking blows. Mm-hmm. But we're just like joking around. Um, so there's weird stuff, but but the the good outweighs the bad by by a huge margin. And I think that's something that we've done that not a lot of shows are. I don't want to say like brave enough to do, but like that we like really have done like like since day one is we shut down all weird behavior. We, if we're if you're in the Patreon Discord and you're being weird, we just delete your Patreon sub and kick you out. Yeah. Like we don't care about losing the 5 bucks and like if you're if someone does something weird to us, we will make fun of that behavior on the podcast. You guys do that. It has drastically changed <laughs> how people treat us in real life. Really? Oh my god. Like when we first started the show, something that happened all the time was people would come up to me and they'd be like, "Oh, you're you're Nick from the yard." I'm like, "Yeah, what's up, man?" And they're like, "Dude, dude, I fucking hate Ludwig, but like I like you, and I'm like, yeah. How am I supposed to like respond to that's, like that's, that's like my best friend? Like yeah, I don't yeah, fuck yeah. with you now because of that, right? And that happened all the time. That's it's, that, yeah. And I, they think they think that like that because they're like they like you, and because they listen to the show and we make fun of each other, that like they that's they've got I, it in their head that like yeah. they can kind of rip on my friends and I'm gonna feel the same way. See, that's kind of what I was th- when I said the parasocial thing. That's more of what I was yeah. talking about. Is like. You know, you guys fuck with each other all the time. You guys say jokes that, like, now you're coming in. Because you guys say so many, like, personal inside jokes to each other that, like, people on the street will come up to you and be like, yo, and, like, act like they're part yeah. of the joke. I can see that happening there way more than, like, other other branches of, like, content. Yeah, because what the yard, like, the yard's, like, sort of mantra from the beginning was always, like, Let's just take the stuff we're already doing and turn the cameras on. Like, let's yeah. like we're already having these conversations. We're already talking to each other every day. Like, let's just like kind of share that with people and you know spice it up to make it more of a product. And uh, people connect to that. And I think that the reason why it's okay in my head is like I've been kind of in their shoes. Like I on long drives. Like I I listen to shows too. I have podcasts yep. that I'm like. These guys are not famous even a little bit. And if I met them, I'd be a little nervous. I'd be like, yeah, yeah I listen yeah. to their show all the time, and I'm like, yep. This is kind of crazy. I'm meeting you. Uh, and I've had that like exact experience before. Like I've met people and I've been like, oh, dude, it's awesome to meet you. And they're like, what? Like, what? like I want to meet you. Like, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you, don't, you shouldn't even want to fucking, I mean, you shouldn't give a shit about me. Like, I like your <laughs> stuff so much more than my stuff. Yeah. Uh, and um, I think that like I get what it's like. And I, I think that when you, people are just bored or they have a shitty job or they're driving somewhere and they just need to make that time more manageable and more, and more comfortable and they want to feel like that time isn't wasted. And if they choose something I'm making, to like fill that time, I'm flattered. And if they have a dose of parasocialness added to that because of that, I'm like, I understand. Yeah. I think it's when people cross lines, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like wanting to send bombs to my house where yeah, I'm like, that's a, that's a line. I'm like, not a vibe, not a vibe. Yeah. I think that's you guys, got me checked. You guys, <laughs> it's got me checked. My dope is at an all time low. All time low. Yeah. You, uh, you, uh, you've told some stories on the podcast of like people coming up to slime and, and saying like a <laughs> joke, like while you guys are trying to play yeah. melee and stuff. And people, like, people come up guys, to slime. Like, like if they don't make him laugh, they die in five minutes. Like they, they come up to him. Like, they like start a, their stand up bit. Dude, like those clips of people who go to Kanye and like, let me freestyle for you. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what they do and i'm like it's why so, him it's so good I, I i mean i think it makes sense <laughs> i think it makes sense he's he's the funny guy he's like the guy that i think he i, I can see how someone outside of it would be like i have to make him laugh more yeah. than anything yeah i i get it too but i but i think it's <clears throat> it's so funny because if you've listened to him talk for more than five minutes yeah you would know you're about to make the biggest mistake of your life <laughs> You would know that, like yeah. going up to him and saying, uh, "Can you make? Can you honk like a clown and, and make funny noises for me?" That <laughs> it's just going to be the worst <laughs> type of thing you get could do. Blasted. Yeah, I remember when I, asking you if you if you could commentate for the off season. And you were like, "Yeah, can I bring one of my friends?" I was like, "Yeah, for sure." Yeah. I did not think you were going to bring slime. And you, when you said slime, I was like, "Holy shit!" Both of them, like, <laughs> like I was like, I hope that like I I was telling you this earlier. I hope that like I was telling Blake. I hope that our wit can like match mm. them because if not, like we're going to get roasted. Like we're going to be the ones that get roasted. Yeah. It's all good that you both. didn't, by the way. 
Yeah. No, we. I mean, we did. We definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely. No, it's all. It's all good because like we weren't. I wasn't expecting much. So. What? No, like, but I'm saying like Blake and I like took yeah, over yeah, the like, show. Yeah, like Blake. Like Blake got there. Yeah. Like, yeah. That was Blake cool. and I. That was Blake cool and I to like, see Blake get there. No, but like with you, really, I get it because like, you're really, like, busy from the event. You're busy yeah, we well, really, we yeah. really took over the show, and like people, I people are like, oh shit, like who are those guys on the couch too? When do we eat wings? By the way, <laughs> it's not this show. That's <laughs> oh. a different one. That's a different one. That's the one with Max Mofo. <laughs> um, so. There's something else that I was just gonna say, but I can't fucking. For your remember. event, me and Slime brought a friend. You wouldn't expect that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, for me, I don't view. This is actually uh, evidence. Uh, this is evidence for favorite, favorite position for why. I, <laughs> right. This is evidence for why I never see myself as on. Ca- when you asked me to do that, I was like, I'm not a caster. I won't be good at casting. I am. This is not my forte at all. I will only be able to do this if I can bring a friend. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah I was yeah. like, if you throw me on the couch with like fucking toe for something, I'm gonna be just like, con- I'm just gonna be like. I, you know, I won't be the worst person ever, but I just I don't see myself as very good at that kind of stuff. But if you if you if you want me to talk about my favorite game with one of my best friends, that will be easy. Yeah, and that's why I wanted that. I was like, I just really don't view myself as like th- those are my strengths. And it was like a- I'm really good at talking to my friends. <laughs> it was a good event to do that, but, but not <laughs> the event where they're fucking they're on Mute City and Corneria. It's like it's a good event to do that. Yeah, Everything's yeah. pretty low key. We're on couches. We're not on desks and. And yeah. there's birio, yeah. There's Beer- all the ingredients for there for it to be a layup. But, yeah. uh, and I'm dressed up funny, which is always an easy one. Yeah. I re- <laughs> not knowing you guys and bringing you guys your suits and I'm like, or your bags with all your like yeah. stuff in it. <laughs> like, I hope you guys like this. I w- I did the same thing with the slime. I was like, he didn't know about this. I'm like, I hope you're down. It really. <laughs> yeah. I didn't give a shit. I'll do whatever. But and I think yeah. and generally he'll do anything. He'll do way more than me if it's funny. If he believes it's funny, the, he will. That do is it. that was my next question. So. Yeah. You guys, uh, pretty much, the yard is crushing. You guys launch the Patreon that crushes like super, super successful Patreon. Uh, Matt's a patron. Pog, it's correct. Yep, 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 yep. I probably owe you like dinner or something. I mean, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll total up your uh, your patronage and see what's up. It, may, it could be Chili's or it could be like a steakhouse. It might be a steakhouse. I think it's a steakhouse. <laughs> Um. Uh. So was it w- w- the the? <laughs> I think the number one. I think I started watching after this happened, which I'm sure a lot of people did because it's such an insane thing that you guys fucking did. You guys get to what? How many subs was it? Well, which one? You, you know what about? I'm talking about? How many? I don't. Su- when he, was it? When I let the, the fans tattoo me? Was it when the wax episode? The was wax it? episode. Okay, wax episode. What is that? Hundred? How many? I don't remember even. Fifteen thousand, maybe. Fifteen thousand patrons. I think we're at thirty-six right now. Holy or 33. shit! Yeah. And slime gets completely nude. <laughs> yeah. And waxes his entire body. We found we found uh, uh, someone who does waxing, and funny enough, she waxed Eric Andre. Um, okay. which was unrelated to us finding her. We, it was just like on her portfolio. <laughs> We're like, oh shit. <laughs> oh shit, she's the like, one. She waxed her daughter. That's, this is a perfect person for us. <laughs> and we said like, can we film you mm-hmm. waxing our f- naked friend right. while we are there too yeah. and podcasting? And she was very sweet. And she was just like, uh, at first she was kind of against it, didn't really know us, was kind of weird about it. And then uh, we had- <laughs> She was weird about it. Uh, she was the weird one in this scenario. Yeah, she was odd. You know, And we like got in there. <laughs> uh and then we, uh, you know, we sh- we sent her the show, and we were like, "We'll do, you know, any r- restrictions that you have, or we don't want you if you don't want to be shown, like anything you want, like whatever." And she warmed up to it, so we went, and it was like a, a, a like an attachment to her house, like she built like an attachment to run her business out of, and it was just this like. Oh, so I didn't watch the podcast. I listened. To- <laughs> How y'all watched that one? <laughs> it, it was funny to listen to. Well, it's so funny. it if wasn't go, at the, it wasn't at the set. If you go watch, no, it's in a, it's in her waxing studio. Okay. And if you go watch the episode, as time goes on, we all get really sweaty and gl- and like we start glistening. Uh-huh. And it's because we blew a fuse with all the equipment we brought in her little studio, so we had to turn the air conditioning off. And it was like a middle of summer, Holy California, shit. like 89 to 96 degree day, like somewhere in that hot fucking range. And we, it was so hot in this room. And Slime, <laughs> imagine how he smelled. Imagine what this man smelled like. He is butt naked. <laughs> He's basically laying on a stovetop. Like he is butt naked, oh drenched in sweat. God. And she's ripping just the, mo- the most disgusting... <laughs> looking pieces of wax out of his asshole because he did full body. She's yeah. like, 
look at it. And she's so numb to all this. And she's like, look at the guy. She does it all the time. Like, yeah. Shh. And uh, it was it was it was horrifying. It was going horrifying going experience. into an episode like because I've known Blake a very 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 long time, and I know I don't know if I don't know the amount of money it would take for me to see him get his asshole waxed. Yeah. For us, it's just like it's gonna be hilarious. You just you just you're about it. Yeah. So going into that episode, you weren't nervous at all. Were you excited? Were you anxious? As a viewer, as I, as someone on the mic, you know, honestly, what I was most nervous about was that he was not going to be able to do it. Uh, I was nervous that it was going to hurt too much and that he was going to want to quit. And mm-hmm. and I was just like, I hope that this like goes well in the sense that I hope we even get to do it. Like I hope that. Yeah. And dude, I, I told him after, I'm like, you are a warrior. Like I look at him different now. I can imagine. Dude. I mean, I look at him. I didn't know you guys dude, at all. And there I was look a at clip. him different. <laughs> There's a clip where she... I think she's doing like his pubis, like the spot <laughs> above your penis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she rips it off, but it doesn't like come all the way off. So she has to rip again and he jumps. <laughs> like he somehow laying down does a jump. Like he got off the table. And I was, I, I remember in the room, we all just go, we just start screaming. <laughs> Because we didn't know what to do, and and you thought he ripped his dick off. It just it just like it was just intense. And, yeah, no, and it's like it's near the most dangerous area. I'm telling you, it sounded very intense. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, the the blinking red zone of a boss fight. Like she's like down there <laughs> punching it, and and I, I'm just like ah, ah, ah. and, and I so ever good. since that day I've looked at him as a warrior. I, I have a, I had a, a hypothetical that I brought up to Blake and George, and neither one of them could really answer it. And I, I said, you know, say we live together, uh, myself, Blake, George. We've known each other our whole lives. How long would it take for us to be comfortable with each other if we were butt naked all the time? Like, like at if what, you became nudist together? If we became if we lived together, just the three of us, and we had to be naked all the time, at what point in life would it just be like nothing? Like, oh, what's up? And the question's time. Yeah, the question's time. I, I think the answer to this has nothing to do with time. Okay. I, I think that it is uh, ha- uh you have to just do it. <laughs> All right, we'll do it then. Like if you just we do have to it, figure it out. then it'll just I think it'll like it could take f- 5 years if you're if you're like not getting in the pool. And then if you get in the pool, it'll probably just mm. not be a not thing. Not th- not be a thing. Yeah. So did over the duration of that hour long, 2 hour long podcast, at what point was it? <laughs> at what point were you just numb at fir- to it? At first it was weird. At first I, it was just he's it just, just butt naked. Butt like, he's <laughs> it's just, just like my f- my best friend yeah. dick ass out yeah. right in front of me. Dude, it was like at, f- <laughs> at first it was just like, yeah, this is happening, and I have to be funny now, and and it's you would think it's really easy to be funny when one of the funniest things ever is happening in front of you. Yeah. But it's actually hard. I, it's hard because you're like, uh, where do I look? Do yeah, I look yeah. at it or do I look up? At that at- point, you gotta just look at it. No, I I spent most of the time looking kind of at him, like his face, like I just kind okay. of like, what are you feeling? I'm like, what okay, are you, what that are, makes sense. What are you that going makes sense. through? Uh, and then you know, once you're like an hour in, the episode's funny. You're kind of you're warming up to like this is a, this is w- this was a good idea and it's working. <laughs> you warm up uh, and it's, it's all chill. But dude, like, <laughs> I was just like, I mean, it's one of the most insane things I've ever. I was, we I've ever I was like, heard. we don't need to do this again. <laughs> I'm glad we did it, and I'm glad it's over. And I, we do not need to revisit this idea. So you're not going next, is what you're saying? <laughs> dude, I'm too afraid to get full body waxed. I can't believe how down he was. Like, That's insane, dude. That is so insane. Like that, it looked so painful. He was screaming. Like, yeah. Like I don't know if I could get full body waxed. Oh my god. I, like even but, just like one on my leg scares me. No, I, I've never. I mean, yeah, yeah. One on my. I think we did it for a, like a charity thing. Got one on my arm or something. It took it me, off. dude. It took me so much courage to put a shot collar on. Oh, we did shot callers recently, and I was just like, "What did you? Wanna, what did you turn it to? Uh, the level? I don't like six or something. I was, I don't six? Know. We just did ten, like back to back to back. Every time you died in COD, I don't, I don't come to that kind of stuff like you do. It's probably you like that stuff, you know? That's like part of your whole spiel, right? You like, you like getting choked, like cho- choked and shocked and. Stuff. Oh, oh, you're saying like come? To, I thought you were saying like I don't come to this. I don't come to like stuff to you. No, no, bust nuts. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, me neither. Spew loads. Yeah. I have a few colors at home. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I do know what you're uh, saying. Let's talk about Makeshit. So Makeshit is your other company. It's my company. It's your company. Yeah. Just, just you. Me. It was just like, you know, 
I'm doing, sometimes I do work that is not for off-brand or any these random companies I work at, and I want to take those jobs, but I, I don't want to be a contractor. So I, was, I just started a company. So, but some, but some of the stuff that you do for your own company, it's basically like freelance, yeah. right? It's freelance, but I own a company, so it's not freelance, but it is freelance. And you do, st- sometimes you do, like you did like a chess boxing thing, or you did like stuff that is still in your wheelhouse. That stuff would still be off-brand. Oh, okay. That stuff would, if it's, it's like, just your if it's for like a Ludwig product, it's all uh, one of his, it's one of his companies. Okay. And then if it's for the yard, it's for the yard as a company. But I, I you know, there's some stuff that I'm just like, if I'm taking these jobs, if I'm like writing for people or directing for people, I just need some, a company to run that through. Yeah. And then I also like wanted to build a portfolio, which I have now. And I was just like, my portfolio needs some sort of identity. And I kept like thinking like, what do I, is it my name? Do I have like a company? What do I want to yeah. do? And I realized that like, I had this kind of revelation where I was like, man, people spend so much time making their portfolio or their Instagram or their profile picture or all these like sort of more surface level things be perfect and pretty and presentable and all this stuff. And that is everything besides the work. It is literally yep. everything besides what you do and you're yeah. like spending the most time on it. And I was like, that is so lame and I'm doing mm-hmm. it right now. I was like, what is it that I want to do? And I'm like, I want to make shit. I was like, that is what I will call it because Boom. I need a name and I, it's all I care about is the work. I just want the work to be good. Yeah. Uh, and so, That being said, your portfolio, it seems like you spend a lot of time on it. It's also pretty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we, can ha- we can have both in life. You kind of got to do both. Uh, I mean, luckily, Otto, our programmer who works at Mogul Moves, is just a fucking beast. Yeah. Um, but The guy who works with us, Atlas, is like loves Otto. He, that's who he wants Otto's to be. sick. Dude, yeah. you know he made Proximity Among Us? No yeah. one knows that shit. It's crazy. That is, in, and he works with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he is young. Is he? Yeah, he when he started at uh, Mogul Moves, I think he was eighteen. Jeez, it's always the youngsters, I think he's man. He's twenty right now, maybe. Yeah, or maybe he's nineteen. He's young. Yeah, but uh, all us like twenty-five year olds and stuff, like we really yeah, started. Yeah, you young. were twenty-five. What in the eighties? Mm. Like when when the world was black and white, and we. That's not. I don't think the world was. What, black you and were white. churning butter was your first job. You're telling me. I don't me? think so. No, I oh. churn butter. If you know what I mean. Nope. Don't know what it's you mean. Explain it. It's a dick joke. Beating your dick. Busting nuts. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and now I get you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I was just like, I, I was, I've always thought that like the stuff that surrounded making content or like, like all the stuff that's like more sort of to make your ego feel better just kind of sucks. And I just want to do the stuff that is the thing I like. Yeah. Uh, that's where that came from. Would you say that you are like chronically creative? Like you have to be creative all the time. Like you looked at your phone before you said that, and I thought maybe you were reading a bio of mine or something. I am. I have it right here. You can't say you can't look at it. Yeah, I, I would just never. I've never said chronically creative, so I was making sure I wasn't no, falling no, into no, a trap. No, 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 you're not. You're not. Okay. I, on you TST. have me on edge. You on TSC. That? On TSC. I'm sorry for edging you, but on TSC. <laughs> on that was a good one too, right? Yeah, <laughs> you're starting to like. You're starting to come around to to the jokes. Uh, no, I'm creative. not. I'm not. I'm not trying. Yeah. I'm not trying I, th- I think that. Um, I made a I made a uh, uh, self discovery a few years ago, where I I was like very unhappy for a while and I was like trying to figure out why, and uh, I realized that like I just did, like, there was a lot of stuff I'd get invited to like friends or like from my partner or whatever I just like didn't want to do any of it and I was like why don't I want to do this stuff that like other people like doing and why don't I like blah 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 and like why am I unhappy and I realized that almost all of my life's fulfillment comes from things I make. Yeah. And if I'm not making stuff, I feel worthless. I feel like I have not contributed anything. To, even if I'm like with my family all the time and yep. like with my friends, like none of that, I don't want to say none of that matters, but the thing that matters the most to me is that I am making something like all the time. And once I realized that, like my life got so much better yeah. because I was just like, oh, I have to learn to balance and do some of these other stuff that is important. Uh, like spending time with family and yada, yada, yada. But I also need to like point everything in my life towards making my next thing. How do I work on another thing? How do I point all of my actions, even my more menial stuff? Like if I like, you know, I started getting better sleep because I'm like, if I don't have sleep the next day, I work like worse. I I create worse. I don't have good ideas. It takes me longer to start being creative. I'm less useful in meetings. Like I need to sleep better. And I, I, so I started making, it was much easier because all that stuff is stuff you know. Everyone says drink water, sleep well, and you'll have a happy, normal life like everyone else. Mm-hmm. And it's like, fuck you. No, I'm going to play games until it's 4 a.m. And then I'm <laughs> going to look at my computer. I'm going to refresh the same Twitter tab for hey. 30 minutes. And, and now gonna, you're doing that again. Then I'm going to get in bed but not go to bed. Uh, <laughs> look through tw- look but it gets through way time. easier to do little menial shit like that when you have a motivation to do so. And for me, it was like 
when I wake up tomorrow, I want to work on this project that I had an idea for that I'm really excited about. So it's like, yeah, finding that motivation to be like really excited about a project and then like sculpting your life to point towards that all the time. And then getting like really fucking lucky that like anyone wants to hang out with you. Yeah. When you have built that life for yourself. Like, like I'm very fortunate that like anyone likes spending time with me when I'm that person because right. I don't think I'm fun to be around. Like I, I get very like no one talk to me. I'm closing my door. Don't want to come in. I'm mm -hmm. working and just don't talk to me. And I'm going to be like this for a month. Yeah. Edit, uh, you edit for 30 hours straight. Yeah. Yeah. And you like, you convince yourself you love it. You're like, I, there. I love this. Yeah. Um, which, you know, in some projects I, I really do. And in some I, I hate. I, I've had to learn like the, you know, one of the most powerful things that you can do is just say no to certain projects like or certain things in life. Like, mm -hmm. like just saying like when someone comes to you and they're like, do you want to direct this thing? I can just say no to something if it means I get to work on the yard more, I get to work on the thing I care about more. Yeah. And, and maybe that thing would like look really good in my portfolio, but how did I move this? <laughs> it came back. He put it back. He put it back. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, 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 we're, 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 how did I almost fall? We're falling apart. I almost fell sitting it's down. It's the, the ghost of optic. Um, <laughs> I'm drunk. Uh, yeah, you know, boring uh, art stuff. But uh, it just I, for me, it was super important that I made that realization. That's like, oh, it's okay that my life's fulfillment revolves around what I make. I think that's okay. And if it's not okay, I don't care. I'm just going to do that, and then I'll be dead one day, and that'll be fine. Um, so I pointed my whole life towards that, and, I, and I've just been, like, way happier since then. Yeah. Because I'm just like, yeah, I, every every time I finish a project, my question is just now, now what am I working now on what? now? Mm -hmm. And I, so I would say, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a chronically creative yeah. uh, type of person. Because I think uh, talking to you and, you you know, you you've designed merch, you've made commercials, you've... Uh, I watched your 48 hour film. It's really, really fucking good. <laughs> um, it was really funny. And, and you're, you know, you're on the yard, you're on talent, you're on camera, you're off camera. Uh, you've done a lot of, you've done a lot of cool shit and it's all really fucking good. Like, especially, I appreciate that. especially like, uh, you know, uh, your, I mean, you've done merch shoots like where you shoot, you know, other people releasing their merch and that stuff has always been something I've been, you know, super interested in. And I think you, you do a really good job. And uh, and so I was looking. I was looking for you know. I tried to like research. You're trying not to smile. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm, I promise <laughs> you. Is, I'm being genuine. Okay. Uh, I, I try to research like people before they come on. Yeah. And is not a lot to find about you besides like fan compilations. Okay. Oh, of like the art. Oh, I've seen. I've seen fan cams. Yeah, you that, got some. You got that some makes fan my cams. my butthole pucker. <laughs> It, it like it does something bad. You do, yeah, the, you you got fan cams. You got like, I, it, it, I felt weird because I'm looking up like interviews and stuff, and the, you've only you only have like one interview, and you got like that that really quickly turned me into someone who I'm like I used to be like I'm only 27, and now I'm like I'm 27. Yeah, <laughs> well, the, the, <laughs> it's like it's quickly <laughs> changed jam. how I think about myself. Yeah, my yeah, age. yeah. And uh, so it, I I find myself like just trying to find any sort of like you know, information to ask questions about. And there's just like, I was watching compilations. It's like, why, <laughs> why Nick is the most, uh, why Nick is the most like, uh, wh what is it? Something of the yard, like the, the most relatable of the yard or Nick, Nick is the sure. best or n funniest Nick moments on the yard. So true. And I'm watching these and I'm like, dude, I feel like such a fucking fan right now, but there's no, there's no yeah. other. So I'm like, maybe he's got articles or something and I'm looking shit up and I finally found something mm -hmm. and it's a hidden little gem. I don't know if people know about it, but it's really fucking good. You have a blog and you've posted twice. On and my website? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really good. <laughs> and in one of those, uh, I, I've got like a, a little bit of a, a, a paragraph. Um, I used to make something and feel like shit when no one wanted to watch it. Like the goddamn American I am. <laughs> now, validation is something that I can press a button for every day. Do you still feel that was a, the whole post was about like shame and stuff and about how like, Shame motivates me. It's yeah, shame motivates stuff. you. Do you think getting on such a platform, on such a, a famous platform, and now you have access to that, where you feel like you don't have to work as hard for the validation, is is uh, hindering to the creative process, or do you think it's better? For me, it's not hindering. I think for some people, I think... <laughs> I think uh, a lot, a, pr a big problem that a lot of like these, like, uh, I don't know if offline TV is a perfect example of this, but I'll use them as an example for now. Um, just because it's like, when I say that, you kind of know exactly what kind of company that is. Uh, I think what a problem that like companies like that face is they go, hey, we're making stuff. 
we need people to help us. Let's hire so-and-so. So-and-so comes in, and then that person goes, I want to join here because I want to work on this. They realize very quickly they would rather be the people on camera. Right. And they go, well, every once in a while I'll pop it on a stream because it's fun. And then I'm, we're all friends. You guys don't mind, and they don't mind. And uh, slowly they become those people, and they go, I don't really like what I was doing here. I wanted to be this thing the whole time. And then you become that thing. And then, you know, yeah. And then quickly you realize, wait, we're all talent, but we have triple the people. What happened? And I, and I've never been that way. I've never been the person who's like, I want to do all this stuff because hopefully it'll translate into me like being on camera in some way. I've always been the person who is like, I like, I do the yard because I love my friends and I love that idea. And I think it's good. and I like being a part of it, but I'm not very interested in, doing like a bunch more stuff like that, a lot of my motivation has gone towards like, like what ideas do I want to do with like the, the money that that has afforded me? Like what can I produce now that I have always wanted to do that maybe I didn't have the money for or like maybe like the, uh, didn't feel like I had the immediate audience to watch it or something. Uh, so I, for me, it's not really a hindrance. I think like that post that you're, that you're reading from, like what a lot of that is about for me is like feeling like, it, uh, I wasn't looking for necessarily validation and now that I get it, it's hard to work. That's not how I feel at all. It's more, uh, I think exactly what I say in there is um, I can work for a month on a commercial or something that I care a lot about or a short film or something and put all my all into it and people will watch it and it'll get the same amount of likes as tweeting, uh, what if my name was Blow Me Hawk instead of Tony Hawk? And and like that and that's very confusing to me because I'm like, what is it that people w care about from me? Like, do, when I really work hard on something and it it exists on the same attention plane of like the dumbest shit I could possibly think about that took me a second and wasn't even an artistic exercise. It was just like right. I think this is kind of funny. Like, what does that even mean? And that's very confusing. And that kind of like makes me confused. It makes me confused of like, am I pointing the right direction? Like, am I doing what I want to be doing? If like that's not the thing. And I think what I'm kind of finding is like, it's kind of all of it. Like, I think that like, I do care about the one-off dumb jokes that come to my head and like wondering if people also find that funny. And I, I also do care about like big serious projects. But I think that, uh, I think what I've kind of learned is like, I can work pretty hard on something and release it and it can, it can reach what I call like the attention ceiling that I'm able to garner with my amount of online notoriety. So like, let's say, let's say when I post like a tweet, it like, it'll probably get around like one to 3,000 likes or something, right? Like I can post something and like hit that 3,000 ceiling and be like, oh, this was one of the better things, right? But ultimately it's a zero sum game because I'm trying to make things that everyone cares right. about. I'm trying to, and, and ultimately I care about. Like I'm trying to make shit that like uh, people watch and then they realize later I'm a guy with a podcast or something like I don't yeah. I don't I don't love that like when I make something there's this baked in guaranteed audience that's just going to watch it no matter what like I want to make things that break through that and like people are watching it because they've been sent it by someone else and they're like you should look at this and blah 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 and so n no it hasn't hindered my motivation in any way it's just made me very confused it's just made me very like is this good? Like yeah. This thing that I made, do people really like it? Or am I, have I found a cheat code where yeah. for this small period of my life while I'm in, on a popular podcast, which I do view as like fleeting. Like I view as like, I'm not going to be this person forever. Uh, and I'm in this like hot spot of my, my life right now. Like, like do these people actually care or will they take anything? And Ooh. the evidence for me is pointed towards they'll take anything. Like you, you look around at like, some of the other big notable live streamers and stuff. And like none of them put a lot of effort into anything and they have so many more viewers. And I think that like mm -hmm. people just connect to like online personalities in this way where they will basically consume almost anything so long as that person is still them in, it, yeah. in that thing. And there are, of course, there's outliers to that. Um, and I don't necessarily think the yard is that. I think that we've demonstrated the opposite uh, because three of us were just fucking random people. But, um, yeah, to answer your question, <laughs> finally, again, it's like, no, it hasn't really hindered my motivation in any way. I don't, the, the feedback that people give when they, like, when they, like, comment on something or like or something or whatever is validating that, like, I had an idea that I felt was good. And it's, like, it's kind of supposed to be proof that, like, this thing is good and people do care about it and it is saying something people are interested in. But I'm sort of studying right now in my life, like, is it interesting and good? Like, do they care? Could I have 
could I have put like instead of a three minute short film, could I put a three minute fart sound? <laughs> and like they would have laughed at it anyways. Like, what matter? Does anything matter? Like, you yeah. know, I, I go down those spirals yeah. of like, like, you know, what do I have to do or make um, to truly be great? To like truly do something that is like undeniably impacting or changing the landscape of like video content online. That's yeah. what I really want to do. Is I want to make online content better. Yeah. You should make like a documentary about Super Smash Brothers Melee mm. for the Nintendo GameCube. Yeah. That would I feel like that would be great. Yeah. That is a, you know, <laughs> that's a dope idea. <laughs> that's a dope idea from a really good guy. <laughs> that's a dope non-checkable idea. Uh last questions I I asked this to to people that, you know, go into business with friends cuz I did multiple times. Um, sucks, right? How, <laughs> no, it doesn't suck. It's great. I love it so much. Uh, <laughs> she turns around. <laughs> um, what when you when you guys are all working under you? Eight, I, I I keep leaving Ludwig out because you guys. It's such a unique thing that he brought his you know you know his guys onto his, his podcast. Having you three that were working at Summit, you working in a semi corporate, I guess corporate yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. And now you guys are on camera talent in a building of a podcast that eventually blows the fuck up. Like, is it, how, how has that been? Is it still flawless or is it, does it, uh, does it get sticky at times? It's never sticky in the sense that, uh, we never have problems that arise because we're friends functioning, like, like right. working on a company together. Like, um, the yard is very different than something like mogul moves. Like the yard, uh, all the guys would sort of agree. Like I kind of run that, the show, like I kind of like all the back stuff. Like I, I right. do, I do almost uh, all the stuff besides like certain little things that we've like, we've spread out. Um, and I don't edit the show. Uh, we have an editor um, and we have a producer zipper who like works, uh, who like does, you know, camera lights, camera and stuff. Um, but uh, all of like the day to day and like, I still do all the yards thumbnails, which is like kind of insane. What the hell? Uh, I've done every thumbnail for the show. Like, uh, a lot of the, like more granular shit I still do it when we launch new shows like I run that like when we build new sets I run that and uh, so there's not really a problem for the yard because I handle it and I kind of asked for that world yeah like, yeah, I, yeah. like when we talked about it originally I was kind of just like I want to do it and I mm. want control over it and like let me have it um, and they were like yeah sure fuck it um, with mogul moves um, there's just there's way more employees than people know about like yeah like we have like 20 employees yeah, so it's yeah. like and and uh, Slime no longer works there. He left, and Aiden like took a, took a huge step down from events and just does merch now. So it's like there's not a lot of like shit to yeah, yeah, to cross. really cause friction. Um, I would say like you know like Ludwig, who you would imagine is like this guy who streams and has all these employees around him who do everything. Ludwig does like a surprising amount of that work himself. Like Ludwig's in meetings every single day. Like Ludwig's very very busy. Um, which makes him extremely hard to like, get a hold of and like shit for like the podcast, which is like a separate thing. Um, but no, there's never, there's really never been, uh, we've, we've never had problems because we're friends running a company together. And I think part of it is like, we're a company, the yard is a company that makes a, a thing. Like we make a show right? and we're all on and in the show and we all equally own the show. So we all have equal investment reward, yeah. uh, everything. And so we all care about it being good. And so there's not a lot of motivation from anyone to like, we don't really have ulterior motives. Like we don't have like things that clash. Like oh, yeah. someone's gunning for a title while this person's gunning for more talent involved. There's nothing. Ha it's just like we all just kind of want it to be better all the time. Yeah. So no, we haven't really had problems like that. But there, you know, there's problems like, uh, fuck. We someone needs to do this thing. Uh, Ludwig is streaming and hasn't responded to anyone in, in a week. <laughs> Slime is now also streaming. Yeah. Uh, and and Aiden is phoned down on his desk playing Valorant. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know I'm whatever. And and there's been stuff like that, but that's that's everything. That's just typical. that's any company run any, by gamers. Yeah, with schedules. Even the most put sense. together companies I've worked at that are run by gamers, you'll run into most insane shit where like well, your 45 year old employee is playing Dota, <laughs> and and so you're, something's not getting done. You're like, what the fuck? I thought I was at a company. Yeah. Well, the thing with with Optic and like how we run our schedule is that we're always on time for everything. Mm -hmm. We no one misses a shoot, yeah. and uh, we're like six months out on content right now. Yep, that's all. That's all true. That's, that's all true. Yep, that's yeah, all six true. months that's out. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, so that's cool. That you guys are so put together. We're so put together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's nothing that uh, that really goes wrong here. It's yeah. Perfect. It's I perfect. saw the little like optic predator triangle like hit your brain just, just now. <laughs> it's <was> like <laughs> optic, optic predator. What a fucking throwback. 
All right. Uh, well, I think, I mean, we could talk for hours more, but I do have to get home. I have a puppy waiting for me, and we have got to play some beer pong Fuck with yeah. real beer. That's uh, dope. With, uh, with I'll call them girly temples. Girly temples. All right. Well, it was a lot of fun hey. talking. Nick Falco. Episode but, something. But most importantly, your friend. But no, most import- importantly, nine with two eyes and nine. Cool. Two eyes and ride. The eye boys. We got to have I, a duo. Eye boys. Yeah. Oh, before I go, I always, ask, I always ask Matt. Matt, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I'm good. You guys covered like everything, I would say. That was like a mm-hmm. long ass podcast. Was, was like, it? How long was yeah, that? Like 205. Oh, shit. Nothing. It might be the longest one. I'm not sure. But you do the show. We put we put up champion numers over. We at did. DR. Now we have to. Now we have to beat fourteen. We have to beat Mister. We're gonna dust that. Yeah, we have to beat. And we're not even drunk, which I, low key makes me play worse. <laughs> uh, Blake and George did not do very well. Forty one. Uh, if you guys want to watch behind the bar, it's on the Optic Nation membership program. Go check it out. That has been around the bar with Nick Falco. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. I know this is very Lex Freeman of me, but I actually want to read something else from Nick's blog that I thought was very interesting and uh, didn't want to blow too much smoke up his ass while I was talking to him face to face. So I'll do it behind his back. Being creative is all I care about. Yes, I'm messy and I'm shitty to be around sometimes. That's it. I'm a snail and my slime trail is Uber Eats bags and Amazon boxes. Sometimes I have to clean stuff, but ultimately I've accepted that I will always be this way. I'm okay with that now because when I eventually die an extremely tight dirt bike related sex death, they will willingly dig through my mounds of garbage and hoarded items to hopefully find something that I made that really mattered. And that's all I want. And I think I'm allowed to feel that way. Pretty tight. See you next time.